If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Man, was this uh, a little uh, heavy, a little fun, a little bit of kind right. of all over the place. We uh, touched some third rails. We... Yeah. Had told some like really dark stories. Like we kind of went all over the place. Yeah, I was kind of strapped my seatbelt in. Yeah, we we <laughs> first we first met Courtney. Well, actually, I'd seen Courtney before I met her. Um, she had there was a viral video going around Facebook of a very muscular female smashing a watermelon between her legs, and it went viral. And then you know that was it. And uh, much later, maybe I don't know, months later. Adam and I were doing a, a talk over at the LA Fit Expo, and one of our uh, fans, one of our favorite fans, uh, Isa, amazing, that's her name, she walks up to say hi to us and brings with her her friend, Courtney Olson. So Courtney walks up, and, bo- and Isa's pretty buff too, so these two girls yeah. come up and they're built. And, uh, and strong women. And strong. Instantly, Sal and yeah. I are intimidated. Yeah, right away, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, hey. Of course. Yeah. You guys could beat us up. I'm in a, I'm, yeah. Normally, I feel confident in that situation. Uh, I can back Sal up, but I'm in a boot. I'm on crutches. I'm so yeah. disappointed we didn't have Sal arm wrestle. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. a missed opportunity. It'll yeah. happen. It'll happen. You know, arm, re- arm wrestling, yeah, that would have been great. That would have been great. I just want it because she was strong. But anyway. She is strong. They walk up, and it, immediately you're like, oh, shit, these chicks are they're built, right? And then I re- recognized you know, Isa, so we're like, hey, what's going on? She's like, let me introduce my friend Courtney. And at first, we didn't recognize her, but she's definitely... She definitely stands out. She's got all this charisma, all this energy, um, and uh, and then she's like, "Oh, I'm the one that smashed the watermelon, you know, on uh, between my legs." And right away, I'm like, "That's you. I know exactly." Uh-huh. What so we talked to her for like ten minutes, and she went controversy like out the gates. Like she's not afraid of saying whatever yeah. she's. Yeah, what's she on came her mind. in hot, and it was great, dude. So right away when she leaves, you know, Adam and I are like, "We need to get her on the show because." This girl is entertaining, and we'll talk about whatever, and this could be really good. And I'm glad we did. We had her on the show, and she talked about her personal story. Dark, there's some dark moments in her story. I mean, she's very open. Like, she does not hesitate saying exactly, you know, what happened to her or the stuff that she's gone through. She was was addicted to meth at one point, alcoholic, Mm -hmm. um, found resistance training. You know, she did the whole muscle worship thing. I mean, it's a very interesting uh, episode. For sure, some shocking moments in this episode, and then we we touched it and danced on some third rails, and I went off a little bit. So, I'm sure some of you guys will like that, or some of you will hate with that. We'll hate that. We'll see what happens. People that love controversy will love this. Yeah. So now you can find Courtney on Instagram. It's Courtney spelled with a K K O R T N E Y underscore Olson O L S O N. She also has a YouTube channel, Courtney Olson, and her website is girl.com that's <laughs> how many G- r's is that g-r-r-r-l.com and then they have this event that they do in vegas uh it's like this empowerment event i think it's april 28th and 29th and i believe you can get the information for it um on that website that i had just said um also i do want to mention this month you get free access to our forum our private forum which is gold um, for enrolling in any of our bundles. Now, bundles are multiple maps programs put together and discounted. Uh, and they're they're put together for specific goals. For example, we have a sexy athlete bundle, which is like, it's about sculpting your body, but also having functional athletic performance. And then we have a super bundle, which is like a year of exercise programming. Mm. Any of our bundles, enroll in them this month and get free access to the forum. Um, or if you're just interested in enrolling in an individual program, you can look at like MAPS Anabolic, which is for strength and size, MAPS Aesthetic, which is for sculpting the body or competing in bodybuilding or bikini, uh, MAPS Performance, which is for athletes or for people who want to have functional athletic performance, MAPS Anywhere, if you want to work out at home or without equipment or if you're on the go, or MAPS Prime and Prime Pro for correctional exercise, or if you're a personal trainer, tremendous value in those programs for your clients. So you can check all of that out at mindpumpmedia.com. And go over to our YouTube, make sure too. We did a fun kind of little silly video. Oh, uh, so yeah. check it out. She did some some interesting stuff on that. Yeah, man. That we're we're trying up. to introduce all kinds of interesting things on YouTube. So just you know, make sure you guys are subscribed if you're not already, because uh, we're definitely adding some entertainment. We're adding more educational stuff, and uh, a lot of these interviews uh, we continue now uh, from bringing in interviews. We'll take it onto YouTube. So. Exactly. So without any further ado, here we are talking to Courtney Olson. 
the boys and I were super excited to have you down here. I mean, you got fucking incredible energy. I mean, I'm just I'm attra- yeah. I'm attracted to other humans that uh, that Don't have shave their armpits. That they too. Put it uh-huh. that's it. Yeah, that's it. That, that too. I saw, I saw the I saw the post earlier for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's not quite my jam, but I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I'm cool. Judging. As long yeah, as you yeah, own it, yeah, I'm cool yeah. with it. Though. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> Sal does. Sal yeah. does. He's yeah. He's kind that's of where the pheromones. Of the that's he's where pheromones accumulate. You clowns. It's so you got to have true. the. Anyway, so we met you at the was it the LA Fit Expo? Yeah, right. Yes. Yes. And one of our uh, Isa. Isa, yeah. one Isa? of our is Isa. Isa. Is Isa? I, I always do I've been it. calling her Isa for a year. I know. It's we, Isa? Isa. Oh, oh damn it. It's up. amazing. Damn it. Yeah, so, I am the worst at So names, we so love okay. her. She's been following us forever. I think that was our first time actually meeting her, maybe second time. She loves, she has got the gift of evangelism. Oh. Yeah. She's mm. like, you have got to come meet these guys. Oh, we love her. So yeah. she brings you over and right up we meet you and your energy is just, it's obviously contagious. Thank you. And we're talking. My cold's contagious too. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh my God. We'll, terrible. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. I we'll got on antibiotics yesterday. So, so. And, and we're looking at you. And I'm like, this is the girl that crushed the watermelon. Yeah, boy. In the video. Yeah. I didn't put it. I didn't put it together until afterwards. No? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, God, I recognize her from somewhere. And we're talking. And then when you said it, I was like, oh, that's where I recognize you. That's from. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. You're like really strong. Yeah. I I am and I'm not like. What do you mean? I was just. Oh, those those that's good luck. Is it a that, good look? That yeah. is a good look on okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they're just there. I just had to. Yeah. Had to. They're not really comfortable though. <laughs> that's so. my alter ego uh, shades. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm really excited to dive into your story, and I want to. I know you've got all kinds of stuff, so I don't know where we should start if we go back before your fitness journey, or if that's part of it, how you got into fitness. Yeah. But kind of kind of take us off uh, from when you when you first got into it or what led you, I should say, into fitness? Okay, so I'll give you the kind of semi-condensed okay. version because I'm a little bit of an egomaniac and I love to hear myself talk, but I also know Welcome that- Welcome to the group. Yeah, like I've, I've, and I'm in this chair and you gave me like this cold brew nitro that just, <laughs> I'm jacked. So, you know, just that, give yeah, me the wind the up. Fire coming. Don't worry, like, we'll we interrupt you. you, we have no yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, don't yeah, worry. yeah please interrupt me if it's too long. Okay. I have a feeling it won't be boring, but- so, um, to, so the full backstory. Mm-hmm. Grew up. Um, you guys know where Eureka is? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Eureka yes. Tweeka. Well, technically Garberville. <laughs> way up there. Yeah. yeah, way up there. Um, grew up there, out in the backwoods. You know, um, mom was an alcoholic. You know, who wasn't uh, snorting coke in the eighties? Right. So mm-hmm. I was born in eighty one. Grew up up there. Um, product of divorce. Um, grew up hating my body. Absolutely hating my legs. Could never fit in any of my cousin's clothes or my friends. And, you know, I'd often stay over at their house because my parents would work out of town. And so I just always felt like uncomfortable in my skin. But um, as a product of divorce, are, do any of you come from divorced families? Yes. My, my yeah. father committed suicide and my mom married into an abusive relationship and then divorced. So Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a lot of us do, and we don't realize how much of an impact that has on us as young people. So I didn't know that at the time, obviously, but as a result and having, do any of you have an alcoholic parent or grandma or anyone in the family? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so it affects a lot of people. And I didn't realize the impact that all this shit would have in my life at the time. But as a result from all of this, by the time I got to junior high, I started counting calories. And then by the time I got to high school, I went down the path of anorexia and bulimia And then by the time my senior year of high school rolled around, I found methamphetamines. And I mean, I was like the all around top notch, like perfect kid. I was going to Stanford on a full ride scholarship. I was in a- Wow, what was it for? I was in a, I don't know. No, no, what were you a full ride scholarship for? No, I was just going to Stanford. Oh, wow. I just say that as part of the story. Okay, well, that's a cool part. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) I was going to Stanford on a full ride scholarship Mm. because it sounds good. And um, I was in a Christian rock band me and Jesus Christ were tight, right? Wow. You know? yeah. yeah. So um, I was captain of the cheerleading team, started the first girls golf team and like nobody could figure it out and the associate student body president. But I found math and I kept doing it because I lost a bunch of weight. And so nine months down the road, one of my teachers finally figured it out and he said, why are you doing it? And I was like, what are you talking about? And I said, because I was losing, you know, I wanted to lose weight. So he put me in contact with this um the, this drug counselor, and he sent me to a guy who was an ex-Golden Gloves fighter, this 72-year-old man named Bob Ross. And he said, right, I know, I have the perfect guy. He's got a boxing class. He'll help you, you know, he'll sort you out, and so on and so forth. So went to um, this guy's boxing class, 
And um, he took a liking to me, very much so, right? So he said, I'm going to make you my last prize fighter before I retire. I want to come over to my house. We'll order some equipment. We'll watch some tapes, so on and so forth. And um, I was three days clean, and I was 17, and um, got to his house. And when I got there, he had a cognac, uh, a sifter full of cognac. And, um, you know, not realizing at the time that, you know, dr- alcohol, drugs, mm-hmm. same thing, same difference. So I took a drink, woke up, and this man was inside of me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, I know, a bit intense to start out the story, but it's a big part of the story of how I got to where I was, right? So woke up, that was a bit shocking, and got him off of me, got out of there. And from that point moving forward, I just went down this extremely dark spiral path of, you know, because he never called me and was like, oh my God, please don't tell anybody. Or, mm. you know, are you okay? Did so, you talk to anybody at this time? No. About, mm. And I assumed it was my fault. I was like, I must mm. have let him on. You know, I shouldn't have taken the drink, um, this, that, and the other. So from that point, um, it was just like this really big downward spiral. I wound up at Sonoma State. So, um, that's so Sonoma State University and that's when my alcoholism started kicking off. So I was like showing up to call like all my classes instead of a, in my coffee cup, I'd have like a screwdriver, you know, like I just thought that's what you did at, you know, 19. Mm. And so I just pissed away all of those years, um, got through a couple years of college, um, DUIs, like very angry individual. Cause I didn't realize that I was like walking directly into my mom's footsteps. Cause I didn't know anything about alcoholism. I didn't know that it's hereditary, it's learned behavior, you know? So I was like literally just walking into her footsteps and developing this dis-ease. And, um, from there, um, got back on meth and it was just this horrific battle on and off until I got to, I was 27 and finally got clean and sober for one of the last times. But then I got hooked on pain pills because I hurt my back because I somehow wound up in the muscle fetish world. Oh, Mm -hmm. so during this period of time, you're still training, lifting. Yeah. So I started, so I got, that I've always been lifting. Like I've been obsessed with muscle and wanting to be buff since I was a little girl. Like my first memory of, um, you know, people say, Oh, would you ask Santa for Christmas? I was like a oh, fucking weight bench. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I, uh, now were you nat? do you, have you always trained naturally or were you enhanced? There was anabolic? like a two week period where I took Anavar. That's it. That's it. Hmm. So, cause you, you have very, I mean, the, there's, muscle building genes that are very rare and you have them where you look like you build muscle very well. You obviously work hard at it, but you also look feminine and that's yes. a very hard combination yes. that you don't necessarily see a lot. It's either like really muscular and masculine yeah. or not. <laughs> I've always been a big girl and but, that's the thing. So when I was on that for a few weeks, I freaked the, freaked the fuck out because mm-hmm. I broke out. And that's one thing that I've always had really clear skin mm. and I broke out really bad, but mm-hmm. my shoulders went because I've always had massive legs and then my upper <coughs> half was always quite smaller. Mm. Um, and then the last show I did, which was the end of 2015, um, what's the estrogen blocker? Oh, Novadex? Yes. Mm. It was that, that stuff. Yeah. I took that for the first time and I took Clen for the first time. Oh, wow. And that that jacked me up. Mm. That was not good. So, and I never, you know, as far as competing, which one of you is the competitor? Mm. Yeah. So, you know, doing all of the cuts and all of that stuff, mm-hmm. like, even though my first four shows, I never weighed my food. You know, I just, I wasn't like that proper. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to go out there and, you know, do my thing. So, so you're doing the muscle worship thing. Yes. That, yeah. So I, that I was, okay. So I know it's, I'm jumping around a That's little okay. bit. Yeah. I'm a bit jet lagged. <laughs> just got back from the Arnold. It's all right. We're going to piece it all together. Yes, that's right. <laughs> like, did I tell you to strap your seatbelt on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I see it. only two of you have a helmet yeah. on. <laughs> I got a helmet on. Okay. Yeah. So, well, they're right in bad joke. Um, so I got into lifting. Like I always had weights in my room through school and stuff you know, like through high school and everything. And my dad and my brother had a garage gym growing up, you know, so I'd go out there. Do you remember Samantha Fox? And oh, yeah. Yeah, right. So I think that's why I'm bisexual. I don't know. Because, because of her? Because of her. <laughs> and they'd always have these like, you know, all the like 80s hot posters of the chicks out in the garage or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> it's random. And I'd go out there and, you know, try and lift weights with him because I wanted to be like my brother so much growing up. He was eight years older than me. I always tell people this, but I used to try and pee standing up <laughs> because I wanted to be like him so My bad. best friend 
into that suit, she, yeah, I, she would be uh, right yeah. next to me. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Get this nitro coffee out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I always had been around, you know, wanting to, to build muscle and everything. Um, I was the first, you know, I'm not the first. I was the only girl on like a... Um, you know, a t-ball team with 70 boys. I, my Most of my friends growing up, I was a tomboy. Mm-hmm. You know, we were riding four-wheelers and all this kind of stuff and a monster truck. And um, so I've always been into strength or, you know, like being one of the boys. Um, but as far as like, I didn't start properly training until I got to college. And that was kind of like, this is what I'm going to do to stay off meth. But I picked up alcohol. And then that was when, back in the day, when ephedra, of course, was mm-hmm. totally legal. And Twin Lab, was it Twin Lab? Was mm-hmm. that the brand? Yeah. Rib Force? Yeah, so, yeah, some diet pill that, whoa, mm-hmm. you know, I'd, so I'd be super And ephedra over. is like chemically similar to methamphetamine. Yes. In fact, you can, I think they make meth out of, out of ephedra. ephedra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a chemist. So I, I know there's... Uh, That's what, the word on the street. At least yeah. I, I don't know. You've watched... What's that show? Breaking Bad. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I can't watch that. It's too much of a trigger for me. I'm like, oh, no. I can't do it. But um, so, yeah, that's when I started to training. I'd go into the gym. And um, so it was like a tricep pull down and then the leg machine. Mm-hmm. And I'd go in there like every day and just train, train, train. And that is when I started my journey. But unfortunately... Um, after a series of, you know, getting a DUI and near death experiences and not really, I didn't realize I was an alcoholic. I just, I don't know. How did you realize it? At one point, did you realize this is a problem? It's, uh, it's, I, I can't remember how I wound up in this woman's office, but it was at the university and she gave me a book and it was called drinking a love story. And it was essentially this woman's autobiography about drinking. And it kind of resonated a little bit. And I kind of started to figure out because I was so angry. Like I would shit on the hood of cop cars and Whoa. I would take. Whoa. Wait a second. A I want to hear that news. story. Oh, no, I, I want to hear this story. I was so angry. Like, and that's when I, I got the KO tattoo. So if you look at a lot of my old videos, like this Prince tattoo is relatively new. And chaos is underneath here. They're my initials. But it was like my alter ego. Cause I thought I was going to be like this big boxing champion. And that was why I went down the mm. path that I did and, mm. and, you know, did all this methamphetamines and stuff. So I could, you know, meet this boxing instructor who was going to turn me into a world champion and then actually turn me into something else. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I got to school, it was like, you know, I had the, um, KO tattoo. And it was like, as soon as I drank, it was just like, I'm KO bitch. Like I'd try and fight like a 90 year old woman with a walker. Oh wow. You know, I'm like, what you looking at bitch? Like Courtney, she's 90 with a walker. Calm down. Nobody's looking at you sideways. Wow. I was just nuts. So, you know, like fuck the police. And even though I was like, uh, uh, criminal justice was my, uh, area of focus. <laughs> Irony. Yeah. So whenever, cause then That's it, how you got your when, scholarship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and when I went off to school, um, my, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go in the FBI and I want to bust every drug addict out there. And you know, I'm going to change the world and mentor all these young girls and stuff. Um, so you just, you just a lot of anger, yes, a lot of internal anger, a lot of in, internal anger. And so I took that out through drinking and not realizing that that's what I was doing. And I was talking about like drinking beer in the shower at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And then I'd go train, you know, like I just didn't, I didn't know because there's not enough education mm-hmm. around it, even though I'm, mean, you boys remember dare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, just, okay. just say no. Just say no. Most, <laughs> most ineffective exactly. <laughs> campaign. Exactly. You know, tell me to do no. Watch me, motherfucker. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, so it was really, um, it was a, it was a difficult time, but that's when I started training. But again, I, um, after I got my second DUI, I dropped out of school, moved back home to Eureka, and then I started drinking and smoking meth. And that's when I just went whew, off the rails. Like, I turned into a bit of a, I had like a sawed off shotgun. About how old are you right here? Low rider. Like I was 19, 20. Okay, you're still young. So it was the day after I turned 21, the legal drinking age, because <laughs> of course I had a fake ID that whole time. I was like, I need help. Uh, I'm supposed to be the first female president of the United States, which I'm sure we could all appreciate right now. And, um, and that's when I went to rehab. And that's when I learned about the disease. I, I say disease on purpose because people hear the word disease, and at least I do. I think of like a crusty dick that's about to fall mm-hmm. off, right? I don't necessarily think of <laughs> that's that. Not, yeah, okay, that's not, so is it just me? <laughs> yeah, but, I, but now I do. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Forever I now. should put the Forever. aviators back on and hit the nitro. But, uh, it's, yeah, it just it dawned on me one day. I'm like, oh, dis, opposite of ease. 
disease. You so got a disease. Mm-hmm. It says because there's so much stigma around mental health. Because I know you guys talk about mm-hmm. you know because it's mind and body mm-hmm. and motherfucking soul. Um, so as far as like the mental aspect of it, because I find that most bodybuilders or um, especially with women have something they're running from. You oh, know. Almost all of them. Yeah, it's rape. It's some kind of trauma. It's, it's body image issues body or image whatever issues. or all of the above. Yeah. So anyway. did you fi- did you figure out? Uh, for yourself what it was that was at the root of your of your anger and, and self-destructive behavior so before the rape i know this is such a uh loaded word for a lot of people um and i'm just apologize for jumping around uh, i hope you have your seatbelt on stories okay. are more fun that way okay cool um i so once i got into recovery and um like i said it was a lot in and out a lot Right. So it took me a long time to actually stay clean and sober. So I have uh, eight years without a drink and I'm coming up on eight years without a drug, uh, June 14th. But, um, I, you know, would go in and out and in, in 12 step recovery, you do a lot of work on yourself. You know, you got to sit down, you got to take your inventory. You got to look at, you know, what is your drivers? Why are Mm. you doing this? So on and so forth. So I had done a lot of work around that stuff. Um, and knew that my body image issue and like growing up and feeling like I hated my legs and I never fit in and I wasn't good enough and obviously having an alcoholic mother and so on and so forth. But the real interesting thing is, is when I, I'm going to jump forward and then I'll come Mm -hmm. back and finish up the rest of the story. But when I had moved to Australia, I was living on, on the Gold Coast and I met this guy named Tony Priddle who... Uh, was a ex NRL player, so he played for St George. Do you guys follow rugby? Mm. I know that all little... blacks. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's like, rugby yeah, union, okay. and then there's rugby league, which mm, is more okay. like uh, NF, uh, more like our NFL, basically. It's okay. like mm-hmm. without pads on. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like wow, this is crazy. No helmets, anyways. Um, and he got into mind work, and he's like, we did our first CrossFit session together, and he's like, yeah, do you want to do a session? And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And so. Um, He, I don't, they call it subconscious psychology was the coin they termed. And you get in this meditative state and then basically you connect to your subconscious mind and you ask a series of questions to find out what your number, your number one limiting belief is. And we we do the session and I find out, um, so we get into it and it's like, what is your number one limiting belief? And I said, I am fat. And it's basically whatever comes out of your mouth is the truth. So when you're in the state, you're not really thinking mm. of much because I have an extremely difficult time meditating, but it, this worked. It, uh, I could show you later if you okay. want to. So um, it will just cost you $500 and a low job. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so I got in this meditative state and um, I came out, I am fat. And he said, okay, so um, wh- how old were you when you, you had that thought? And I said, I was seven. And he said, okay, tell me a little bit more about that. And I was waiting for the words to come out to say something about my mom, right? Because as women, and men have body image issues too, just as much as women, right? But we talk about it and you guys don't. Mm -hmm. And that's why you guys have a higher suicide rate, so on and so forth. So I knew, I I had seen a lot of psychologists and stuff in therapy and trying to figure my shit out. And one psychologist said, you know, your mom growing up as an alcoholic must have said some mean things to you and you just need to cut that anchor off and move forward. And so I was waiting for those words to come out. And then all of a sudden I said, pedophile. And I just sat there in this state and I can't, I'm like, no words are coming in and no words are going out because you know, the mind is constantly just self-talk, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, hmm, kind of like observing. And I'm like, what could that possibly mean? And then all of a sudden, the words just started spewing out of my mouth. When I was seven years old, my best friend growing up, her older brother Gabe, took me off into the woods and touched me in some inappropriate places. And it just came out. And I'd legit completely had forgotten about it. Buried it. it. Buried Mm -hmm. it. It was mind-blowing. Like, legitimately Mm -hmm. mind-blowing. And what we worked out... So this subconscious psychology has a piece of spirituality, right? Because we are, we believe, just souls having a human experience yeah because we often are so in the physical world that we don't often look at the metaphysical world and so the other piece of it is asking your higher self your soul your spirit whatever the fuck you want to call it right um your guide what have you your intuition um what the message was and what we worked out was that was the first time i had ever stopped i stopped listening to my higher self Because my higher self, my intuition was like, no, don't go off into the woods with him. 
And as a result, I did and, and got violated. And it wasn't anything too terribly bad, right? Because ha- there's so much that goes on with that stuff. You know, you start looking about pedophilia and people talking about Pizzagate. Yeah, and, you know, people stuff. are like, oh, conspiracy yeah. theories. Like, we won't go there because I'll fucking talk your ear yeah. off. Um, but, it, you know, it, it was just, you know, t- touching still. It's not a pro- It's not okay. But I'm just saying it's uh, some people hear that word and they lose their shit. But mm-hmm. anyway, from that point moving forward, I created this image of myself needing to be ripped up and strong in order to be protected and feel worthy because like if, create a shell. Yeah. Because if I don't see muscle, like right now, I haven't worked out in a week. And to me, that's a really long time. Like generally speaking, I mean, I might miss a day, you know, every couple of days or doing something, even if it's like a seven minute workout or whatever, I'll do something fucking hundred air squats. I don't know if I'm on the road, like I will move, but it's been over, it's been over a week. Um, and, um, the fuck was I what, did, what did the healing process from these things that you're uncovering with yourself, what did that look like? Cause you said eight years sober. Uh-huh. Yeah. How, did, how did you get to that? Cause I'm sure there's people listening right now and I, I get the sense from you that you feel like part of your calling is to help others. Well, you turned oh, at one point, you turned your weakness into a strength. When did that happen? Absolutely. Because it, you, you, because the image that I see and that I know now is this yeah. woman who's not afraid to get down in her thong and smash a watermelon yeah. and <laughs> shows any sort of stretch mark on herself. Yeah. Doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, where did you go from someone who had poor self image to yeah. all of a sudden making it a strength? I know. Cause I jumped around a bit. Hey, <laughs> so how the, the process went and it, it's still a journey. It never, and this is what I tell people, uh, you know, people that follow me on Instagram. I made a post a couple weeks ago where I'm like, look, if you've just started following me, just know I, I, this is a daily thing. I haven't always been this way. I still will catch myself in the mirror sometimes and be like, fuck, my ass is so flat. Or, you know, I am um, was, devel- or I was diagnosed with Graves' disease uh, a year ago. And as a result, like my skin is kind of like sagging a bit more and like just I'm aging. And, you know, so those thoughts keep coming up. But all this process is it's constantly be, it's really becoming aware and just understanding of how programmed we are through advertising and media. So backing up to the muscle fetish story. OK, so I was um, in, it's kind of funny because I was an Internet sales manager for a, a car dealer group with eight um, dealerships. And I was on the Internet and uh, I was on Craigslist. I was looking for some side jobs. <laughs> I was looking for some side jobs. Okay? And I saw this ad and it was like um, muscular calf video shoot. Athletes and ballerinas need apply. And I was like, what the hell is this? This this certainly this must be some kind of porn or something that's weird so of course i went and took a picture of my calves i wanted to find out and sure enough this guy got back to me and he was like yeah so basically i just film you like flexing your calves and um that's essentially it and i was like a hundred bucks oh, yeah, that's easy yeah. yeah i was like yeah okay i could never do that job not because i can't do the job but because my calves are small yeah, right. well, of course they are. everybody jabs at these guys yeah, yeah well yeah. yeah get my like program <laughs> <laughs> it's 50 percent off code art uh, that's a beautiful plug, plug. Right there. yeah thanks like thanks shameless commission please yeah yeah i'll split it with you um and um uh, so hundred bucks. So, yeah, 100 bucks, so you go, you, you so shoot. Go, yeah. And he, yeah. So this was my introduction into this quote unquote muscle fetish world. Right. Cause at that point, like being in the gym, I've never seen, I never, like I saw women bodybuilders on magazines and stuff, but I didn't like know a single thing about the rest of the world. Mm. Right. I had no clue. Cause I grew up wanting to be a size zero. I wanted to be Kate Moss. I wanted to wear bongo jeans. Mm-hmm. And I oh, bongo jeans. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't <laughs> fit into any of that. Yeah. Vans. I wanted to match my vans to my bongo jeans, like my friend. And I couldn't never do that. I had to wear, you know, leggings. Cause uh, anyway, so, um, uh, so you do the calf shoot. Do the calf shoot. See that there is this whole entire world. Thank you for keeping me on track, by the way. I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This whole entire world of um, men out there who wanted to pay a lot of money for videos of random stuff. So arm wrestling dudes. That's how I got into arm wrestling. So my boyfriend at the time, um, who I used to refer to as Bubba, because I, I would write a blog about all this stuff. 
um, would be in most of my videos. So we'd arm wrestle and I'd be like, you little bitch, you know, like, so they want to see like a woman. They want to see dominant. Dominant, dominant woman, but, wow. but a strong, but an actually strong, like, you know, Amazonian type figure, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there's all these different genres. So it was like arm wrestling, wrestling. That's how I got into BJJ. Um, and then like lift and carry. So guys that want to get picked up and carried around, I'm sure a lot of women who are listening to this are going to be like, that's why that Indian dude keeps asking me how much weight I can, like if I could bench press him or <laughs> like they would want to get thrown, you know, like fireman carry or piggyback or, you know, doing calf raises with him sitting on the back or so crazy. Well, right. you know what? Any, any woman who well, I remember when I told you about my experience with this, when yeah. I, when I, I'd never seen it until I got into bodybuilding. That's what I'm saying. Right. When I got into bodybuilding, all of a sudden I started getting these inboxes yes. and people were offering me 250 bucks and all I had to do was like flex my bicep. Yes. A bunch of, I was like, what? Smash an apple with your yeah, bicep. I almost did it. I told the yeah. guys, if I, if I needed some money at the time, I would right. have done it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. Flex my bicep a bunch of times. Like I could do that. What was the thing with Kai Step Green and something about... Oh, he actually had sex with a grapefruit, I think, okay. in the video. <laughs> I bet like that was probably some kind of... Requ well, I don't know, but it might have been some kind of request. Oh, like, I'm sure. There are... And I mean, I was just mind blown. I had a guy. Um, so would the, you go and do this? Like, so they pay you and then you do these things for them or would you film them and then sell the video? Make the videos. Okay. And it would go on this website, right? So it's called Clips for Sale. Not Clit, Clips. Thanks. Just want to clarify. Yeah. Just want to clarify. Totally different. Appreciate that. <laughs> <Service>. <laughs> the very different website. I just want to clarify. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything. And, you know, I'd get asked for like, like you know um calf worship and then scissoring was another one they want to see me choke my boyfriend out with my legs crush things and that's how i got into smashing watermelons oh my legs. shit oh. some guy so you know it paid me to make a video and then so i got paid to make the video and then put it on the store residual income Okay, young people, just talking to you about residual income, <laughs> entrepreneurship. I love this. You don't right. need to go to university and then have a bunch of monetize college your skills. And then right, yes. so just just keeping it real. You don't have to know what you need to do with the rest of your life right now at the age of fifteen. If you're fifteen and listening to this, you might be too young. You might not be. You you make the call. But <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying. There's a lot of other things. The world is not exactly what you think it is. Right. And I'm talking about like I would get requests from rock stars, like federal judges, pediatricians. Wow. Just any kind of guy, college kids. So I'm starting. So you went kind of deep into this. I went deep, dog. Wow, deep. See now, I'm, this is very interesting. Were you to me like because yes. I did it, like, and, yes. I, and I'm the type of person where I'm like the fucking ad too, where I'd be like, eh, why not? Well, let's let's see what this is all about. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't fuck a great. Were you like a celebrity? no, no, yeah. no, no? And there's right. plenty of women in the industry that do. Like you know, if you want me to sweat to, in my socks and send them to you, my dirty socks. Yeah, no problem. Fine. People pay for that. Yep, yeah, dude. Okay, so check it out. Like, I always miss the spot of my armpit because yeah. of my muscle, you know, right? So I always miss that one spot. But they want me to grow my, this one guy, to grow my armpit hair out, wear a sports bra, sweat in it, and then send it off to the United Emirates. Shut the he'd, fuck up. He'd pay me $400. 400 bucks? <laughs> Adam, wow. relax. I know. <laughs> well, this is a car. I think okay. you just found a manager. Literally, two He's days like ago, we had a conversation on here, and we just found this article about somebody, Sal, you read this, about uh, people, fart fetish. Fart fetishes. People yeah. paying money yeah. to yeah. fart in your face. I'm yeah. like, that's crazy. Like, I've been. And I said, listen, all these that's a lot of money. I've wasted. Listen, to all these fucking lazy kids that can't get a job. Last week, yeah, alone, yeah, right, get right. an Uber, fart on somebody's <laughs> face, get his sweat in the fucking. Make it happen. I mean, right. Come on, come on, come on, yeah. fucking jobless. Yeah. Come on, anything that I, you I, can theoretically, I'm a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the thing of it is, is what I started to realize. Right, so here I am spending my entire life wanting to be a size zero to fit in those bongo jeans to such a point that I would use drugs and alcohol and do anything, starve myself to realize that there are men out there, and I never got a request from a woman and obviously what I've worked out is you guys are all programmed to like different stuff but mm -hmm. you all don't talk about it with each other because you're afraid you're going to get labeled or called gay by your friend or you fucking weirdo yeah, sure. because it's not normal mm -hmm. it's not mainstream now if on the cover of Vanity Fair all of a sudden Kim Kardashian grew out her armpit hair and braided it which there was some stupid trend where women were like coloring it yeah for a minute and it was all cool and then that went away but like if this was an ongoing thing you know then that would be seen as beautiful so but it's weird right, right. and at first I I was like, this is weird. And then after a while, I was kind of like, why is it weird? And I started to question it. And I'm like, holy shit, the world is really not what it appears to be. Now, are you a celebrity in this world? Are you like a like one of the more well-known muscle yeah, worship? Well, I, I didn't spend very long in it. Mm. So I was in there for, I don't know, like two years or something like that. It's a decent but, long time. Yeah, I was because I'm a bit of a ham on camera. 
you know, I could play, I could, I like to ham it play up. it up. Yeah. Ham it up a bit. And, but I was really interested. We're in, going to make one of these videos with Justin today. Just so yeah, you know. I'm down. <laughs> oh, I, down. I wanted to scissor you, bro. The Come eagle on, has man. landed. Yeah. Huh? Carry him around the gym. Well, like when I did the, you um, have to check the wife on that one. I did. Uh, no, I want to teach her. I want to yes. teach her to, oh, wow. yes. this, this yeah, be a this group is, effort. I'm such an entrepreneur. Like this is like my five year plan. This is the, the 10 year plan is a dog rescue and living off the grid. If the planet is around around by then but the five-year plan is like showing women how mm. to do this stuff and like fire up your marriage and yeah so it's called bedroom wow. boom anyway um i shouldn't reveal all that right now but i'll teach her how okay. but yeah so um uh, so you're kind of a ham on the camera yeah, people the are camera. loving you you're getting was shared a lot it. but i was interested in what what was driving these guys and i would ask and i would be like where did how did this start? Right. Like, where did this come from? You know? And I just listening to the stories and, and you know, you guys are wired differently. Men are wired to procreate. And if you were all interested in the same thing, there would be a bunch of Paris Hilton's walking around, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. That and, would be a nightmare. Yeah. I would, I, I don't know. Teach I don't, your own, but no that's not my job. Right. You know, I, it, the thing is humans <laughs> in general are very complex. We're very cognitive. Obviously we have a, a self-aware consciousness different than animals. Yes. And so what happens is when you take fundamental fundamental behaviors or in instincts, if you will, like food, uh, sleep, sex, you know, whatever, when you take those fundamental instincts and you apply them towards these extremely complex, self-aware, you know, creatures, they look very differently. So like look at the culture surrounded around food. Like we obviously food is, is necessary and it's so necessary in fact that we've created all these cultures around it to have different ways of preparing food and different flavors and different and you have different disorders with food and, and yep. different you know normal you know attitudes toward food and the same thing is with sex and one of the things that men are wired for is novelty mm -hmm. uh, novelty is important because on a very basic biological scale um, you know, men uh, can impregnate uh, how many women in a nine month period, right? And a woman can only get pregnant once in nine months. Mm -hmm. So novelty becomes very important and that novelty can get expressed in many, many different mm. ways. And obviously there's nothing, like if nobody's getting hurt, who cares? Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. But you're, you're right. Like there's, there's a lot of differences between men in terms of what, you know, gets them off. And they call it a fetish because it's, different than what is socially accepted. It's not a missionary Exa position. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I, and my dad used to, I remember one time I met him in San Francisco and I, um, like had cashed in and he, I dumped out a bunch of bills and he was like, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, no, you don't understand dad. I get paid like to make these videos to, you know, pick these guys up. And then like I'd write stories and then he started reading my blog. I could imagine being a dad trying to piece that together because <laughs> yeah. that shit didn't exist back no. in his time. You know no. what I'm saying? Well, so he's no, going, I'm pretty like, sure it did, but it was like, they used to have like to like write letters. Right. About it, right. You know? right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and he was just, so then he was like reading my blog and he'd be like, yeah, did you get that guy? And I'm like, yeah, dad, I did. So, um, but yeah, it was just, it, it was very eye opening experience for me. Right. And at that stage, I really realized that the world is not what we think it is. And people see men in particular, you know, see beauty in many different things, many different things. Mm -hmm. You know, this one I told, I was at the Arnold and did a uh, impromptu watermelon smash in front of this booth with this DJ and, you know, I'm like, I got on the mic and I'm like, women, do you see the cellulite back here? Do you think this is going to stop me from smashing this watermelon? You know, I'm the woman with the world's deadliest thighs and da da da. And I'm like, when your man's hitting it from behind, do you think he's looking at your legs and thinking, Ugh, I don't like that cellulite? No, well, my erection's gone. No, he's not. <laughs> he wants you. He wants your confidence. He wants your, you know, and I just went off because that's, that's what it is. So it was really eye opening for me. And anyway, long story short, I was out in Australia. Husband stepped on my foot in a coffee shop. I almost punched him in the face. And from there, it was kind of like love at first sight a little bit. <laughs> we got we got we got married after just four months. It was really uh, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Oh, this, this is recent. Wow. Well, two. I I still count on my fingers. Again, kids, you don't need to be great at math or physics to be an MF CEO. I still count on my fingers. We just had our seven year anniversary. Oh, very so cool. It was like 2010. Very cool. Yeah, that'd be right. Um, so we got married after four months because I was like, yeah, well, I'll move out to Australia and then nobody can. My mom can't borrow. 
borrow money yeah. from me. Now, how did you make the transition from the muscle worship to now your right. like you, social uh, media? You and- kind of grazed over too. Like, did you do pretty well doing that? I mean, did you make a good living doing that? I did, but here's the problem. I just would make more money to spend more money because at the time I was still... I was still obsessed. So I was working on recovery, but I, so I got off of speed and drinking, but then I found pain pills, Mm. but that wasn't my problem. And my name was on the bottle. You know, I just watched, um, Chris, what's his last name? You know, bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Bell's documentary The pills one. Yeah. Every 19 seconds, someone's, ODing oh, it's on big, prescription drugs. A huge right? heroin e- epidemic. It's, it's just shocking. a prescription. And yeah. that's what I had got hooked on. First, it was just Vicodin or Norco. And then I was chewing up like 10 a day. And all this time, I'm bodybuilding, right? And by my last show, I'd got hooked on Oxycontin. And that went from like 20 milligrams to 80 milligrams. And it was a nightmare. Um, but uh, <coughs> so all that time, I'm still looking for love on the outside, right? You know, and even though guys are like emailing me every day and mo oh, muscle goddess you know i'm not worthy and i'm starting to realize beauty is not you know what it appears to be mm-hmm. but i was still not figuring it out what a unique lesson from that yeah i was still looking like and i'd feel for my abs and you mm-hmm. know especially when it came to competing because competing can be so unhealthy i was chewing up food and spitting it out you know when i hear women say yeah i'm going to do a show i'm like yeah. uh, it just we've oh. talked about that on the show oh. like we we say all the time like and if you have a if you don't have a good relationship with your body and yourself and food, if one of the worst things you could do is, is do a show. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, I, compliments. That's why I say to women, I'm like, compliments are like lines of coke; they don't last long. And that's why I did speed because it was you know less yeah. or longer. And coke was way expensive. Hey, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> For anybody but, contemplating one or the other, yeah. the more you know, <laughs> the, yeah. the more you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, we all the same age. So I'm like, you know, the compliments are like lines of coke; they don't last long. And so I, you know, I would uh, end up sitting in my closet full or cl- crying into my hands because I didn't have anything I felt like I could wear out of the house that fit. You know, I was just so obsessed with my body, it was a obsessive compulsive disorder mm-hmm. like just and so even though on the outside you know I was still looking re- relatively well put together and I'm having all this you know making great cash you know bought my first house two cars in the garage you know bull terrier like it was, it was, it was awesome but Life it was good I had a spiritual bottom mm-hmm. so it wasn't like I got to the point where I'd wrecked my car and you know we all have different rock bottoms and so this final last one was a spiritual rock bottom. So I was just making more money to spend more money to tan, to, you know, do this and that and so on and so forth. So when I I was out in Australia on vacation with my ex, met my husband, my now husband. And at any rate, by time he and I were married, it was like towards the end of the year. And I, we were from the beginning, I was straight up with him. And he was like, look, I have three rules. As long as you're safe, you're happy, I forgot the third rule. <laughs> but, <laughs> Figures. Yeah. <laughs> but because... He didn't, and then the most important rule. Yeah, the right. most important rule. But because he didn't put any boundaries on me. Probably, like, probably be truthful to you. That's what I would say. Just tell me the truth. Yeah, right? something along those lines. As long as you're safe, you're happy. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, don't do math, kids. Um, <laughs> it, it, it He was okay. You know, he's like, I just want you to be happy. And... Um, Maybe he had two rules. We'll just keep it at that. As long as you're safe and you're happy. Okay. (laughs) And that, because of that, because, you know, my ex wasn't like, he was like, you can't, I don't want you to make out with girls and tell me certain things that I couldn't, couldn't do. And as human beings, our natural instinct, or maybe it's just addict behavior and alcoholic behavior. I'm like, oh yeah, watch me. Yeah, Right. Right. So, but because he didn't put any restraints on me, it was just, I wanted to be a better person. And, you know, so I finally realized like, okay, making these videos and stuff wasn't really what married women do. (laughs) And I realized that I wanted to start and empowering women because I've always I always wanted to mentor younger girls but at this stage in the story I was like okay I wanted to stop women in the street and be like oh my god your calves did you know that you could make a video like you were just saying <laughs> yeah. right you could make a video and get paid like a lot of money to put it online and blah 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 and I started a, a brand called confidence by Courtney and it's confidence with a k unfortunately I got it tattooed on my back and it's like this horrible tramp stamp and um 
I started making YouTube videos and it just, it, they weren't good enough. And I kind of let it go off to the side. But at the time, then my partner got this job as a CEO of the rugby team. Mm -hmm. So we moved up. He, I was the assistant strength training coach for the under twenties, which is like the junior feeding, feeding team. And this reporter found out that my last name was different than his and did a little digging around on the internet and found my clip store Oh shit! And because so, but there was nothing on there. Like I didn't, you know, nothing topless. Like I had some topless photos on that you could find online. I did a few shoots when I was younger that, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. in hindsight, you know, now I can tell girls like, look, it might seem okay, cool at the time, but there comes a point where you might want to run for, you know, poli- pol- be, in, be a politician or um, what sure. have you. So um, he, uh, because my name was affiliated with this adult only website, the headline read, CEO hires ex-fetish porn star wife to train the under 20s. Oh. Wow. And this story went around the world. I had like fans in Denmark sending me pictures of the newspaper and there I am flexing and you can't read anything but like porno star or, you know, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck is this? Like, what, are you serious? India, the UK. I'm like, this isn't news. This is not news. And it was during, and the crazy thing is, is the day before the story broke, I actually applied for Big Brother, Big Sister because I had a void. Like I still, like it was great. I was doing a man's job and it, Australia is a very you know, male dominated country. Mm-hmm. It's a boys country. And, you know, I was around the footy clubs and stuff. And, um, but it's still like, I was still missing something. I still wanted to share this information with young girls. Like what is alcoholism and addiction? Don't take tits or don't take tits. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't take, take tits, tits in your girls. mouth. Yeah. Don't take them girls. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> don't take pictures of your tits and send them to your dirt bag, older boyfriend yeah. to buy you beer. And here's how to be assertive. All of the things that I felt we should have been taught in school, mm-hmm. not how to regurgitate facts. Like who's the 37th president of the United States of America to graduate junior high. I sure fucking don't remember. Mm-hmm. Do you? No. Okay. So um, I applied. Boom. Next day, that story broke. And the whole month, like, I was just drugged through the dirt. Moms are like, you dirty slut. I don't want you to train my oh, son. Man. And Because wow. the reporter went into me being, you know, a ex, uh, ex-drug addict and a rape and, like, went into everything. But the way they framed the story, they pulled this picture off of um, my Facebook where I had on this little schoolgirl skirt because I used to do photo shoots as well, right? And I just, I did. I looked a little trampy. I was like, uh, had my butt sticking out. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm leaning on an engine. I made a post, I put the post I up saw, on Instagram. I saw, did that you was see it? Instagram post, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. they took that photo and they used that. And then like there was a few other ones. And the way that they had just placed it, it was just like, had I come across it, you know, it would have been so easy to judge and been like sure. yeah you dirty little slut oh I bet you like to mm-hmm. mm. and uh from there went around the world and then and at the time again it didn't bother me that much because at the end of the day i'd done so much work with 12-step recovery which we were talking about earlier that i know i'm a good person you know you could call me a sheep fucker and i'd be like okay that's fine i know i haven't fucked any sheep sure. whatever mm. you know when i go to bed at night and i put my head on my pillow i know that i'm a good person and um, it wasn't until the big brother, big sister called me in January because Australia takes the whole month off for Christmas, right? They take the whole month oh, off. Uh, and they called me and said, hey, we got your application. Sorry, we can't work with you. You know, good luck with everything that you're doing. But if a mentor can Google you and see what you've been up to, you know, I'm really sorry. And then I sat there and just I bawled for like 10 minutes. Poor me. Oh, everybody's right. I'm worthless. <laughs> My life's over. And then for whatever reason, I just had one of those burning bush moments like that god shot where i was just like you know what fuck that i'm gonna start my own program ran by people who've been there and done that and not just talk the talk but walk the walk Mm. and i worked on this program for teenage girls for like the next nine months and then i turned it into camp confidence so the tattoo still had some relevance and with a k and we did that for two and a half years and it was great we had girls that were cutting themselves and eating disorders and can you help them out it was amazing, yeah. We, only, we had 62 girls come through and they would come, they have body edu- body image issues and we'd show them the basic things of fitness, self-defense, meditation, nutrition, teach them about the truth behind the media and advertising because what I learned when that story rolled out was who's controlling the media? There are literally six corporations worldwide who control every single media outlet, right? And how that got syndicated around the world blew my mind. 
And I really started to kind of go down the rabbit hole a little bit and try, try to figure out, like, why are women... Because there was an all-blacks player, as you said, you know, watching Rugby Union or knowing of Rugby Union. He married a porn star the year before this whole thing went off, and the whole country was high-fiving him. Well done! Good job, son! Mm-hmm. Slapping him on the ass. Way to go! You know, but when my husband has, you know, a recovered blah, 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 that whole story, it was like I was the biggest whore and dirtbag on the face of the earth. So... How did he respond? You know, oh, he was, he was brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. You know, he's like, I'm so proud of my wife, you know, like, um, you know, the club might've made a, a poor decision and I'll take responsibility for that. But Courtney has got a good soul. Like it was, again, took our relationship once again, next level. Mm-hmm. Um, so, good. yeah. So, um, again, uh, got to the end of two and a half years with this camp confidence thing and, um, one of my partners got pregnant. Yeah, have some, don't Sorry, I just coffee. hit myself in the face. <laughs> right in the face, man. <laughs> my Goodness, my watch shits. caught right there. Was like, <laughs> man, watch okay. out for those snipers. Yeah. Okay, do you need <laughs> mouth? so stupid. Oh, do you need mouth to mouth? It's, it's, mouth to mouth? it's, it's his first time. I'm yeah. sick. Um, but again, I'm on antibiotics. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need probiotics. But um, one of my partners got pregnant. And so we had to put the camp down. And um, then at that stage, it was like, okay, well, we took the vision and the mission of Camp Confidence, teaching the tools of self-love, and which then rolled into sisterhood and put it into this clothing line, which is now known as Girl Clothing. And for the past two and a half years, I've been absolutely killing myself to, you know. How's did you, did you ever feel there was a moment where you kind of felt like an imposter because this was something that was really hard for you to work through. And then now all of a sudden you're telling everybody to be confident. Did you go that, through a transition? That's an absolute great question. And what was funny is I actually got my, my boobs done at one point, which you may have noticed. <laughs> uh, don't recommend it by the way. If you ladies are thinking about getting a breast augmentation, I just, just, I don't know. I know some women really do enjoy their breasts, but it's not been a good thing for me. I think I've got like my hands have started going numb and one of them. It's more common than people realize. Yeah. If it's, yeah. Somebody mentioned hashtag implant illness and I just found like a lot of stuff out there mm-hmm. on it. And maybe that's contributed to my autoimmune disease. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff. That's a whole nother topic. But um, uh, yeah, the Daily Mail, another news outlet, because they love to write about me out there for whatever reason. And um, we're like, yeah, confidence. Uh, Courtney Olson runs confidence camp for girls, but defends her boob enlargement. Oh, that was like front page news. I'm like, are you serious? Like, wow, they're coming after you. Yeah, huh? they were coming yeah. after me. They wanted my ass. Were, so uh, I said, you know what? Look, to each their own. And at the time, you know, I uh, shaved the sides of my head because I was um, competing a lot in jujitsu. And I tell you, when you're in your gi and guys don't see your legs and they start fighting dirty, and I get them between my guard and it's like, if somebody wants to pull my hair, I'm like, fine, man, I'm going to shave my hair. Now you try. <laughs> um, so not having, you know, much hair and I'm always flat, flat chested, like, like I'm talking like that flat. And plus, um, you know, when you're obsessed, cause I was still, even though I was recovered off drugs and alcohol, I was still quite obsessed. Like I was doing CrossFit. Brazilian jiu-jitsu and hot yoga all in one day. Damn. Five days a week, mm. right? It was not, It's like yeah. a gauntlet. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so at, with the, the, the goal of your clothing company is to continue to promote those values of confidence or? It's teaching women self-love. Mm. And and the the major, contrib- the contributing thing to this issue that we have is the media and advertising. Everything is fake. No one looks like what Cindy Crawford has been quoted saying, I wish I looked like the supermodel Cindy Crawford. Mm-hmm. Right. So why do we have flaws? Why do we think they're flawed? There's no such thing as a flaw. Yeah. Oh, I'm perfectly imperfect. Why are you imperfect? What's imperfect? You know, like everything is how it's meant to be right now. Right. It is what it is. Right. But it's imperfect because some fucking advertiser is trying to sell you some shit that you don't need. And like I said, I always had found that by making more money to spend more money, that money never gave me happiness. What gave me happiness was of being of service and do, being having a purpose and doing something for somebody else. Meaning. 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 Yeah. So Did you find that working towards this meaning and this purpose helped you with your own self? 100%. 100%. And the more authentic, because I'm now that I've got a platform and I hate social media, because primarily because we're just so unaware of you know, subconsciously, 
right? So I don't know how much you guys talk about the mind on the podcast, and I'll be Quite a, bit. a lot a fan. It's in the now. title. Yeah. Okay. That's from what I was just. <laughs> I didn't want to make assumptions, <laughs> but because we, I um, you know, knowing that we like avoid it. yeah, ninety five percent of the time we're in our subconscious, right? Our our pro like where all of our programming mm-hmm. is yeah. and all those programs, and that we're in there on autopilot, not consciously aware. And we're just doing scrolling and looking and all those beliefs that we're creating and those negative thoughts of, you know, like, oh, I don't look like that. I want that life. I want a baby. And you know, the minute that lady put that baby mm-hmm. down wah, wah, and she's like, can I just get five fucking minutes of peace to myself to take a shit? Yeah. God. But on her Instagram photo, it's just this lovely, cute picture of, you know, a wonderful life. And so we're always constantly comparing ourselves and looking at others and saying, oh, I wish I had that. It's very nat. We just talked about this on an episode. It's very natural to compare yourself to the people around you because that's just the way humans construct uh, well, everybody- societies and stuff. And the problem is when you're scrolling through and looking at Instagram or social media is it gives your you and your brain the false assumption that that is your community that's that's that that's normal like i use the example of uh, of the nba all the time like if you if you watch the nba you see all these guys that are six foot five or taller seven foot tall and if that's all you ever watched you would assume that that's common when yeah. in reality see a seven foot man is extremely rare so you create this false uh belief of what your what it looks like in your community and then you automatically and this is again this is human nature compare yourself to that and it, it leads you down, down a path of, of really not liking yourself. Well, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. I think that we're in this era now, too, with, this, with the Instagram thing and social media that we're, we're consuming so much of that. And I gave this analogy the other day in the podcast of imagine like back when we were kids or when you first felt insecurity set in. You know, For me, that was probably in the high school age when I felt really skinny and other boys looked bigger and more muscular yeah. than me. So imagine I walk out my door one day and everybody I saw looked like the cover of fucking men's health. Like that would just totally just dwarf you and just push you down, like make you feel like, oh my God, like everybody else looks amazing. I'm the only one yeah. that looks like this. That's what social media ends up doing for a That's lot right. of these people because they follow all these people they want to look like. Those people are fake as fuck putting all this bullshit up all the time. That's their perfect look. And right? now you can Photoshop abs right. onto yourself. Right. right. Or the, all the filters, yeah. like even with the, I, I don't have Snapchat because I'm so angry at those I filters. saw you playing with the Insta story one. Just today is the first time I've ever dicked around with that and I did on the on Facebook too because um, we launched we launched an Indiegogo campaign to uh, raise capital because I don't want to go to a venture capitalist I don't I don't want some man because they're generally male dominated breathing down my back saying this is how you're going to run your company and you, you know, want the autonomy to do it yeah on your own. I want, and, and Feel, let people feel like they have contributed to the growth of this. Mm. But yeah, I, I, those filters, they're, they have such a horrible impact on our subconscious. And when I went to the doctor yesterday, because my poor grandmother, she's 88, and she was like, you're not coming over, you're just sick, because I hate taking antibiotics. And um, again, don't get me started on conspiracies. <laughs> and I was there, and he, the, I was explaining to him what it is that I do, and he's like, yeah, there's, there seems to be a lot of studies now that, um, you know, the social media is really having a big impact on um, young people's mm-hmm. mental health. And I'm like, I... <laughs> You fucking think? <laughs> Hello. We just we just read statistics. So, <sighs> so since 2010 to 2015, suicides <laughs> among teens has jumped, uh, I believe, almost 30 percent. So I, in a five year period, that's a massive, massive jump. That is and, ridiculous. And here's the thing: like the root problem. I don't believe the root problem is social media. I think social media becomes a, another way to look. Here's the bottom line: the antidote to all these terrible things that we think and do to ourselves is really learning to care about ourselves. Like we care about someone that we actually care about, like actually loving ourselves. And the way you treat yourself is a direct reflection of how much you hate or love yourself. And the more you hate yourself, the more you're going to treat yourself like someone you hate. And if you really, let's say, imagine if you really hated a person, like you truly did not like them and you hated them and you were in total control of their entire lives you would treat them like somebody you really truly hated. You would feed them in particular ways, or you would, you know, you would do things to them that weren't good for them, or you would say things to them because they're truly a, a person that you really don't like. 
that's how we are. That's how people can be with themselves. And the reverse can be true if you truly care for yourself. And I think the problem is, and it's funny, I read this statistic where, you know, people who have pets and take the pet to the, to, to the, vet, to the vet and the vet says, your pet needs to take this medication for this illness. The percentage of people that are consistent with the medications that they give their pets is far higher than the percentage of people who actually give themselves medications like they're supposed to. Uh-huh. So we literally take care of our pets better yeah. than we take care of ourselves. And part of that is because we view the pets or our children or our friends as people we forgive and we're empathetic towards and we love them and we yeah. care for them. We view ourselves as this person that deserves no 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 empathy, deserves no forgiveness. How dare you think those things? How dare you do those things? Yeah. You're not, you're a terrible person. And if you think of yourself that way, you're going to treat yourself that way. And it's in direct relation to how much you hate yourself. And the more you hate yourself, the worse you're going to treat yourself. And the reason why social media can be a tool to fuel that yeah. is because if you're thinking to yourself, if you're a you know, 14 year old, 15 year old kid, and you're, you're like, man, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm I, like, I was the same way. I was, I'm really skinny. I'm really skinny. I'm not, uh, I'm not good enough to be like the other guys who are yeah. big and strong. Yeah. And I already have that feeling. I'm already not liking myself. Yeah. And then on top of that, I go on social media and that completely distorts reality to the point where now I relate to nobody. Yeah. I can't relate to any of these people because I am so much skinnier and weaker and, and insufficient and not manly enough like all these guys are. I'm going to hate myself even more and that spirals down and social media can be, and it's just a powerful tool, like anything that's powerful. Like I'm sure you spread your message now through social media because yeah, it also and, can uh, be used that way, right? I, exactly. I, I, it's a love-hate relationship because obviously now I can get on there and, and reach women and they can hear the story and, and get it. But at the same time, I hate it because it completely takes us out of the present moment. And that is all we have. And that's something, again, in 12-step recovery, you learn. It's like, just for today. Okay, well, what that means is there's no such fucking thing as yesterday. Mm -hmm. The past doesn't exist, right? As you said, we're Mm -hmm. the only mammal that can, you know, go back and, like, revisit. Conceptualize that even. Yeah, and we keep replaying the tape over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Or we future trip. There's no such thing as the fucking future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. It's great to have goals and to plan and to, you know, prepare and be driven and manifest and visualize and all this stuff. But we get so anxious and what if, what if, what if, and, you know, think of all these scenarios and we're never in the present. Like all we have is right now, right the second time is a man-made thing and that shit doesn't Mm -hmm. fucking exist. But what, again, social media does is it takes us out of the present moment and we're on there and we're then we're not present, especially with kids and the impact this is having on, you know, see a two year old on an iPad doing shit. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is really like hurts my soul because or, you know, you see the the parents are out and bless them. But, you know, they're trying their kids trying to get their attention and they're at the mall or something and they're on Facebook scrolling around. It's like, "Uh uh-huh. Yep. Sure enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shut up. Yeah. In a minute. And then the kids sitting there creating beliefs about themselves that they're not good enough. And like I said, from ages zero to seven, that's when we create all these beliefs. Mm -hmm. So in this example that I learned that really blew my mind was that, okay, let's say, do any of you have a younger sibling? Yes, yeah. I have three. Okay, what's what's the younger, what's the age difference? Uh, it's uh, four and then two years all the way down. So my youngest sibling is 30. 30. Okay, so and um, we'll say the, the 30, you said 34, you're 38. So Thir- okay, 38. When, when you were, like I said, I'm really bad at math, sure. kids. You could still be an MF CEO and count on your fingers. Mm-hmm. Okay, <coughs> screw it, we'll just say you were, and what's your um, youngest sibling's name? Katarina. Tim? Katarina. Mm-hmm. Okay. Katarina is one in your five. Mm-hmm. All right. And Katarina is in her high chair and you're on the floor trying to learn how to tie your shoe, right? You're doing the rabbit run around the loop, pull the thing, trying to get your shoe tied mm-hmm. and you can't do it. Was your mom around growing up? Yeah. both okay. times. Mom's in the kitchen cutting up an apple and Katarina is dicking around in her high chair and she's about to fall out face forward. And at the same time, you can't tie your shoe. Mom, come here. I need your help. And she looks up at you and she looks at Katarina and she looks hold on, I'll be right there, Sal. And she runs over to Katerina and grabs her and sits her down in her high chair and gets her situated. And what happens is, is you and your little five-year-old mind creates a belief that Katerina is better than me. Mm -hmm. Mom loves Katerina more than me because she got her attention first. And then the fucked up thing is, is that you don't realize that you've created this belief and that goes into your Mm -hmm. subconscious. And what's the truth? 
the truth is, is your mom was being a good parent and making sure that Katarina That's didn't right. fall face forward out of her high chair That's and right. die, right? right? And your mom doesn't know that you just created that belief. And so let's just say, you know, do you and Katarina get along now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because oh, yeah. it'd be funny if you didn't. Yeah. But <laughs> for the sake of the story. She got all the attention. Yeah. I hate her. No, okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. So around Christmas time, you know, you guys Strike get together and you just want to punch her in the face and you don't know why. So things like that, we don't realize. But imagine that times one million. And we were constantly just creating those types of beliefs. Yeah, or also, imagine that with an actual bad parent, right? Yeah. Right. So, and then all, uh, the amount we hear no growing up as a kid, no, no, stop that. No, right. no. Like, what is that doing? Our minds are so programmed. And you think about w- social media and like what Facebook is doing that's actually changing the chemistry in our brain and the dopamine to look for those likes. Like when you get on there and I'm like, and at least I have the awareness and I consider myself semi woke, I suppose, even though I'm just learning about things like white privilege and shit like mm. that. And here I thought I was some fucking woke guru. Like, uh, oh, no, I'm just joking. I've got it's, it's, every day is a learning experience. Sure. But, um, you know, and I, I think I'm aware of these things. But, you know, imagine someone that doesn't have that awareness. And I look and I'm like, oh, I only got like 2,500 likes on this picture. But when I, you know, two years ago, I'd have like 200. When's it going to be enough? When am I going to get that blue tick? If you're waiting, I don't have a blue tick. I'm not a badass. If, if you're if you're waiting for uh, external, yeah. yeah. If you're waiting for Sounds external, like, give things. me the blue it's dick. That's what yeah. I, that's <laughs> what I'm hearing on this. Show. Give me the blue dick. Yeah. Wrap it up. Hey, hey, Papa Wrap Smurf. it up. Huh? Yeah. yeah. If you if you're if you're waiting for <laughs> if you're reliant on external factors to validate you and to make you feel good about yourself, that is a that is a path to hell. It is. It is a hundred percent path to hell because <laughs> uh, it'll never be enough. You yeah. will always feel empty. Yeah. There is no meaning or purpose behind it. And yep. people need meaning and purpose. And like you found yours, right? You found your meaning, which is to help others through this process. And in doing so, it has filled you. And it, it has been has. your antidote. It has, but I still like... Uh, Doesn't mean you're cured or anything like that. absolutely right. But I, with meaning, you have now purpose and it's a totally different feeling than getting up and going to a nine to five job. Absolutely. I, I want you, I want you to school me a little bit on the white privilege thing, because this is something that I see. I see a lot of these privilege things popping up and yeah. I just, I don't really subscribe to a lot of them. I yeah. don't. So tell me what you're learning. Okay, And I did the same thing, right? So peep game. <laughs> and can I just say this? You motherfucker, you got this song stuck in my head. I wish I was a little bit taller. Oh, yeah. I wish I was a little Smaller. baller when you were talking about NBA. Oh, yeah. So now it's just, now there's the program. <laughs> it's going go. off. That's a great song. Um, I know. I, uh, so, okay, here's the story. We have an online Facebook page, a private group for our, our, we call them the girl army. We don't have customers. It's the girl army. It's the sisterhood. Right. So the clothing line is all about creating a sisterhood. First, yes, we learn to love ourselves. And then once you stop seeing other women as your competition, then we see them as sisters and we start to work collectively because we believe that women are held back as a gender because of our own doing. So let's say you're a female, okay. Adam, and I'm like, nice ass bitch. Yeah. Whereas if you know now it's like oh my god you have a nice ass like what do you do like do you, what do you squat how do you do and now all of a sudden we're friends and she's like oh my god I just left the house thinking I had such an ugly ass and <laughs> you know great and positive energy so by working together it changes the game so we've got this online closed Facebook group the first thing that happened and this was about a year and a half ago I had a shirt we had two shirts and um, my friend that did these two tattoos she drew up these two different designs. One said warrior girl. And it was a depiction of a woman with, um, she looked kind of like, a, like an Eskimo. It could be native American, what have you. Um, and then the other one was a said girl tribe and she had a patch on and she had feathers, but she was like a pirate. And somebody said in the close group, and this was before we had the comment moderation thing turned on. And, um, somebody said, Oh, well that shirt's like, cultural appropriation Um, and that is a whole nother topic and Mm -hmm. I'm and this is something I'm not uh, comfortable really going into because I don't feel confident in talking about it because I I'm still I'm keeping an open mind to it it's okay we speculate on mind pump all day long we have open conversations like that's why I asked you because it's not something that I subscribe to so I want to hear your opinion so the privilege part though so I, I I saw and I got it and I explained the meaning of it in the drawing and and all the rest of it. But the thing that happened was, is there were, you know, white women who were saying, well, if you don't like it, just scroll by it. If you don't like it, then don't buy that shirt. Basically like shut the fuck up. Whereas opposed to, as opposed to saying, okay, well, why is that? Or I hear you and I acknowledge you. 
let's let's move on or help us understand. And and the thing is, is that we can't have these conversations online. Communication is difficult enough as it is, right? right? Like w- 10% of a conversation actually has to come down to words. And the rest of it is pitch, tone, body language, which none of that you get online. And that's, again, another reason why social media is so fucked up. Because you can look at one thing and it means, mm-hmm. you know... 10 different things Exactly, 10 different yeah. exactly. Um, and so we went through that and a bunch of women left and then some stayed and it was this, I woke up to this huge, massive fire and I'm like, Oh God. And then Trump got elected and, um, with the group, you know, we don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion because these things divide us. And I'm like, we need to stay united. That is our number one thing. Um, but when Trump got elected and then, um, the women's March and I saw this one article and this woman, she was a, it was an Asian woman. And she said, if you weren't at a black lives matter March and you were at the women's March, then you're not my sister. And I do not stand with you. And I took that so personal and I was like, this is bullshit. How are we going to move forward? What the, you know, like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like we've got to start working together. And I wrote this blog and I basically said, you know, I don't see color. Uh, You know, I see women. Why can't we just see each other as women and and unite that way and let that be our one thing that unites us. And then I also said something along the lines of um, copped heat for saying we say vag up as you know as a design on some of our shirts instead of you know man up oh badge up badge up I you like know it. like yes. i don't think betty white actually said this but you know she said oh those things take a beating you yeah, know yeah. right so um and then there would be some women in the group that say well, betty white was so betty badass she yes, was such a badass um you know oh you shouldn't say that because then that alienates our trans sisters and i'm like oh fuck fuck you know so we live in the united states of offended like i'm not trying Here's- to i'm not trying to offend anybody but at the same time you know i'm like women because uh, then people think we're are you a feminist and i say well no i don't subscribe to that term because there are black women who you know say they don't subscribe to that word because there <coughs> are forms of feminism that that support feminists who didn't want black women to have Mm. the right to vote or there's turf feminists who don't believe transgender Mm. should be uh, they're not this is why I don't subscribe to this bullshit this is why I don't subscribe to this bullshit because it just ways to fucking separate us in all these categories Uh, yes and the separation thing was like we are all one but here's the thing about white privilege that I actually understood because like I said at first I took it very personal and I was like privilege what do you mean about privilege you don't know about my life like I, I was raped I grew up with an alcoholic mother blah 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 right and I, th- and I wrote this blog and I sent it to um, a, a customer of ours named Brianna. Because when I started this company, it was all about having body diversity, right? And I didn't think about color because I'm a white person. And she reached out to me and she's like, hey, girl, where are all the black girls at? And I was like, oh, oh my, I didn't really think of that. My God, there's one b- black girl in my entire high school in Eureka. You know, those things weren't, it didn't really dawn on me, but just as much as I it affected me by not seeing a woman with legs my size being in the media and advertising. The same thing goes for color, right? And so I said, okay, that's interesting. So I invited her out to do a, our next photo shoot with us moving forward. I sent her this blog and I said, hey, can you read this for me before I post it? And she was like, I hate to tell you, but no, no. So what you're asking me to do is to take off my skin and hang it up at, on the door before I walk out the door that doesn't work. And you're asking me to forget about my heritage and my past and so on and so forth. So I thought, okay, great. I I didn't post it and I put that off to the side. And I'm like, clearly there's a conversation to be had here. And the topic had come up a few more times in the group and I'm realizing, great, we can't really have this conversation on here. And so this is in part why and this is why I'm out here is that we've got our live event at the end of April. And one of the things we're doing is having an it's intersectional feminism is the term having a panel on this. We have a transgender woman, Janae Kroc is going to come and speak. Um, and then we're going to have um, a talk on the topic in an open panel. And it's not just color or race, um, but or sexual identification, um, but also abilities. Right. So privilege is simply and, and how I, it resonated with me was this. If I get pulled over, right? Because every time I get pulled over, and this is how I got Arnold to stop by the booth. Yeah. Because I was going over and I was talking to the sheriffs and the cops and, you know, making friends with them and everything. And they're like, yeah, we'll get Arnold to come by. No problem. Um, If I get pulled over 
And I told you I was a criminal justice major. So I dropped some terms and I'd be like, I know how much discretion you have. All right, <laughs> let me go. And I said, you know, roll, roll down the window, knock, knock, knock. Do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, like, yeah, son, because I'm packing guns. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, off you go. Just slow down, okay? Drive safe. Now, if I'm a woman of color and I do that, yeah, because I'm packing guns, son. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. You know, like it, that, you know, how that goes down it will look, may look very different. I come from a family of law enforcement. I was grown up to respect authorities to a, to a certain degree, you know. I, except my, when you were shitting on there. Yes, except for when I was <laughs> shitting on the car. I fucking love you guys. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. And that's the thing, right? Like, I'm not a bad that person. Feels that's a, yeah, and bad. I forgot to mention that. Alcoholics and addicts aren't bad people who need to get good. We are sick people who need to get well. Mm. Like, I would steal your wallet, Sal, and then help you look for it. <laughs> She's like, I, I know where your wallet is. Yeah, wow. it's in it my a, pocket. It was yeah. a natural reaction like, for me to look for mine right there. I know, yeah. okay, I got it. I'm not that person. <laughs> okay. right? Let's okay. find it together. Yes. Yeah. Um, she always knows what my stuff is. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know, bitch? You know, here's a, here's here's my. Uh, I have to give my opinion on this because okay. what a lot of here's what it all boils down to. There's a lot of power with being a victim okay now let me let me clarify yes nobody wants to sit in a room and be like i have all the best life i i had two parents who stayed married everybody's great people start to talk about how shitty their lives are and it becomes a competition or what makes them a victim or why they're not privileged and it becomes segmented and then more segmented and then you know more segmented and now you have a you know a black woman arguing with a gay, you know, black man and who is more privileged than the other and oh, what about the, and the reality is this, at the end of the day, the smallest minority group is the individual at the end of the day, okay? It all boils down to the individual and what makes somebody's life up and their circumstances up, it's a it's an endless list of things that could have happened, it, how you perceive things, it could be mental illness, it could be your life, how you grew up, it could be money. You could be rich, you could have all the great things, but then you could have mental illness. Or you could, I mean, I could sit here and make a list and we'll be here for you know 15 hours and I still won't even be you know, a 10th of the way down of all the possible things. And so the problem with labeling people by anything other than their character and their own individual actions results in, and that's a form of collectivism. Right, it's, we're still putting people in boxes that it's way. It's terrible, and it's a form of collectivism. And what happens is you make a t-shirt with a girl that looks like a, a pirate or a, or whatever, and you get people going, that's cultural appropriation. What they're doing to you is they're giving, they're saying, I have power over you because I've declared this mm -hmm. offensive. Like, look, no, I'm sorry. Okay, is it offensive to you? Maybe. What does that mean? That means if you want to, you could do all the things that you're, that you have the freedoms and liberty to do, which is boycott, you cannot buy it, you can cause a big stir, which is what you did. But it's when- uh, How's that any different than you getting mad every time you see a lighter because a lighter is what lights meth and you have this history connected yeah. to that and then now you're offended when somebody decides they're gonna it's collect bust out a lighter. It's collectivism and collectivism is dangerous. Here's what collectivism is. Collectivism is women do this, men do this, black people do this, transgender people do this. Uh, the if I could take 10 people from the same category, I could get 10 women, okay, and say, okay, you guys are all women, therefore you guys are all exactly the same, right? Not even close, yeah. not even close. I could take 10 minorities, I could take 10 transgender people, like everybody's so individual and so different and everybody's story is so different, everybody has different challenges and some people have more challenges than others. But the only way to navigate through life is not to try to categorize people and try to imp try to put your power over them by declaring yourself more of a victim and them as an oppressor. The key really is look at each individual person and base your decisions on their character and what they did. I have, me, uh, I have as much in common with, uh, uh, you know, uh, I have as much to do with slavery as a black person in America. Why? Because a black person born today has nothing to do with slavery and neither do I. Now, we could go back to ancestors and maybe we can find people who did terrible things. I could go back in time and find ancestors of mine that were 
terrible people that were horrible people, but that's not me. I'm an individual. Everybody's an individual. And this, and when we start to value each other as that, that's when we find unity because we're never all going to be the same. That's crazy. That's okay. crazy. You can't do, that is a very uh, difficult, and actually it's an impossible way for us to construct society or to get yeah. along. There's no way to do it. But if we look at it, if I look at you and I'm like, you know what, Courtney, you look like you've had a different life than me. We look very different. I know nothing about you other than your social media. I'm just going to hang out with you. And if you're cool to me, guess what? I'm going to like you. Yeah. And that's just the bottom line. If you're not, then you're, then I'm not going to like you. I don't yeah. really care about anything else. Yeah. It's, and it, <clears throat> it's, um, it's frustrating because a lot of times I do feel like I have to walk on eggshells now. Like I'm going to, you know, upset somebody. And like I told you, I'm, I forget when I came in, I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. You know, I, I, you have to, you have to, you have a strong character. And yeah. so what I would say to you is keep your character, especially yeah. when it's getting challenged, yeah. which is when you you want people to hear your real message. Yeah. And when you have people saying like, that's offensive, you're like, no, 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 no. Listen to my real message. Yeah. Stand strong in your character because otherwise it's going to get muddied. And yeah. And they say, you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah. And um, it's just and terrible. I said, that's what I said. I'm like, look, it comes down to intent, right? Here was Absolutely. the intent of this shirt. And that still wasn't good enough. I was like, fine, I took it off sale. I did. I took that shirt off sure, sale. You're meeting market pressures. And that's where not, that's we fine. are and where we are now today, a year and a half later, and putting on this event again, like the first event we put on last year, it nearly put us out of business. Uh, I We paid, uh, do you, have you ever been to Vegas and have you heard of the Artisan? The Artisan? Yeah, hotel. No, no. Well, apparently it's a swingers hotel. Oh, oh well, there you go. Yeah, that's why we haven't heard about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what if I said yes? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I love that place. And your wife's like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we booked out that hotel and uh, anyway, it, it, we didn't even, it, long story short, it nearly put us out of business. And I'm like, why are we doing this event again? And the reason being is because the whole point of this brand is for unity. And at the end of the day, it is about listening to understand and not listening to be right. Because I wanted to, I wanted so I wanted to be right, but I, I realized the more if I'm just, if people feel like you're willing to listen, then they we all just want to be understood and heard. So, and everybody, we've as long as we keep an open mind mm -hmm. and are open to shit, then I, I feel like then we can start to take down some of these barriers. But I, I do, I agree with it on the cultural appropriation part. It's like, oh, well, you know, now we're putting each other into boxes and categories. And But the privilege part is is now making more sense to me, though, because, and, it, and with transgenders, right? Mm -hmm. Like they, I have a privilege because I just walked back there and it just went straight into the women's room. You know, if you're a transgender and you're like, fuck, which, you know, pro operation. And I'm not up on these terms of cisgender and all these yeah. things. And that's, those are your, to me, I'm like, am I being a bad leader? Because I actually haven't had time well, to sit down and no, research we can't, this No, you can't well, like keep I up said, with this bullshit. No, like I like <laughs> can't I said, keep up with this bullshit, no, dude. like I said, if you treated people like individuals yeah. and you just looked at a person and said, here's an individual. I'm going to treat them based off of their character and how they treat me, then we wouldn't have any issues. Now, are there more challenges sometimes for people? Fuck, you better yeah, believe that's it. it. That's the thing. That's a of course, that's yeah. legit. There's legit people who have, and sometimes it's a result of their circumstances <coughs> that they can't control. And sometimes, many times, it's a result of circumstances they can control. Dude, like the, who's, who's, more, who, who's more privileged? The white girl who got raped? The, the, the black girl who got beat? The transgender who didn't have a bathroom? We, we can't compare each other to no. that. Everybody's story is different. Yeah. And you could, there's there's definitely somebody in that privileged category that didn't have it as bad as someone in another privileged or unprivileged category. Yeah. Fuck all that. It's very dude. difficult. But if Fuck I, all that. But here's the deal. Like, again, like if I see a transgender individual and, or I meet one and I view them as an individual, not as a part of, not as a homo, you know homogenous part of a group or whatever, and I see them and I meet them. And I introduce myself and we talk and I'm like, wow, this person's cool. That's right. it. Here's another analogy because I love analogies. And this is just what we'll wrap up on because I know it's been a journey for me too. And I've gone through the same exact thing. But for example, I, I, and you, I shouldn't put you on the spot, but I'm going to. Are any of you alcoholics? No. Okay. No. So when people would say to me, why can't you just have one? Sure. You have a, it's, you're weak. It's willpower you have weak willpower and I'm like, you don't understand. Yeah, they literally don't. When I take a drink of alcohol, it, there is, my chemistry is different. It creates, it, it causes a craving phenomenon and I have an allergy to it. And then it kicks off the obsession and the cycle starts and I won't stop until the wheels fall mm -hmm. off. And I believed with every cell in my body that I've 
just going to have two drinks. I was going to be the designated driver. And I wound up shitting on the hood of a cop car. <laughs> so, you know, until we're in that other person's shoes, mm -hmm. I suppose. You know, and I say, if you're not an alcoholic, you will never understand what it's like. And that's why as alcoholics, we have this bond. All right. And, and I, I look at it now. I used to say, hi, my name is Courtney and I'm a recovered alcoholic. Ugh. I was angry about it. And now I'm like, hi, my name's Courtney. I'm a grateful recovered alcoholic. Like I look at it as an amazing thing because I have unconditional love. Because if you're an alcoholic, I get you. I understand you. I, you don't have to explain to me. I know what it's like. I totally get it. So when I started to look at it that way and I thought, okay, maybe there's something more to it. Because I was in, I'm in the same boat as you where I was like, this labeling shit, blah, blah, blah. blah and I was the same exact way. So, but it, at this stage, and the reason why we're putting on this event is I'm like, I want to dive deeper into it. And is it a massive risk for our brand? Fuck, yeah. I, I commend your courage. Thank mm -hmm. you. Me too. Thank you. Like, because I want to Hulk out of my shirt right now, but I need it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I need it. That's a, it's a, I Thank commend you. you for your courage because this is a, it's unfortunately a touchy subject it uh, is. nowadays. It's... And it shouldn't, I, you know, it really shouldn't be, I, I blame politics because yeah. politicians spend a lot of money divide and conquer man they, they spend a lot of money on figuring out how they can Don't corral people no it's and, exactly and this is this is i think we're feeding into it by separating yeah. all of ourselves like yeah. that we're giving them what they want yeah. they want that's to divide and conquer that's exactly right the one percent yeah. and i here's the thing i and this fighting. is how condescending is it to look at someone and be like oh you're so underprivileged poor you like that's also an assumption. How condescending is, is it to right. tell a girl who puts out a fucking shirt and does everything she's doing that it's that it's that way? Right. That's been through probably fucking way more than that that's person's my, ever. That's been. my my ah, my dude. point is like like I don't you don't know each per look at Oprah. Oprah is one of my heroes. Okay, she's one of the arguably one of the most successful, if not the most successful, women of all time. If you know anything about her story, about how she came up and what she had to go through, right. it's insane. Now, if I was just walking around with this you know, belief system of, uh, you know, victims and oppressors and, uh, you know, uh, privilege or whatever. And I didn't know who she was. And I met her and I'd be like, oh, poor female black, you know, individual, poor you, you're such a victim. She took those things and turned them into her fuel and became right. an incredible. Right. And, and, and so my point is that not that these things don't matter. Of course they do. They're, they, they're part of who we are, yeah. but it's, it's a dangerous path to go down when you look at people as, unprivileged, privileged, whatever, and you yeah. base it on things that you don't have enough information to, de yeah. to, to determine that. When I bring up depression, like I've written about depression before and certain words, you know, I've said, I'm like, look, there's nothing wrong with you. And again, my intent was, like I've been diagnosed with depression. I've been given Prozac mm -hmm. and I didn't take it. And I'm, I have a, a massive rant about that stuff. And I was working on trying to explain, again, on Facebook, on, on my per, my. Um, I hate saying fan page. It's so ridiculous <laughs> on my page about how we are all just energy, you know, and that, you know, some of us absorb more than other people's energy and so on and so forth. And I, I, what I was saying was there's nothing wrong with you in a sense that it's okay to not be okay. And that, you know, it does get better. And, but because I didn't word that word for word, then there was just people like, Oh, I'm, you know, that really upsets me. And, and then you're just like, oh man, and you just want to, and you're like, fuck, I stop what I'm trying to say, yeah. you know? And so communication is so difficult. How tiring is. is that from knowing what, what you are trying to give back to everybody and knowing what you've been through? It, 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 it gets tiring, mate. Like I, but at this point now, um, I, uh, after two and a half years, and I was just talking to my grandmother about this last night, she's 88 and she's like, I'm like, Graham, man, we're due for a pole shift. Like, I, I'm pretty sure the poles shift every 26,000 years, right? So the north goes to mm -hmm. south and south goes to north. And then we go through an ice age and all this crazy shit happens. And, uh, you know, like I watched, have you seen Cowspiracy? No, oh, no. The, the, I didn't you mean see the, it. The, the cows and the poop and the, the <laughs> gas coming off that one? Yeah. Oh, I watched a little bit of that one. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the cows and the poop? Yeah. <laughs> It's that the one, isn't it? It's that one, right? the ice age, is that what <laughs> The methane gas yes, being yes, the, yeah, the problem. We're, we're going to yeah. choke ourselves out. Yeah. Uh, you know, but as far as like the environment and what's going on, I'm like, you know, or whether it's, you know, Trump and North Korea or what have you, or Einstein, I said, brought up, you know, he said, I don't know what weapons are going to be used in World War Three, but I know that World War Four is going to be fought with sticks and stones, mm. you know, and I start thinking and I'm like, why am I killing myself? Because it's literally as an entrepreneur, 
I have like $27 in my checking account. I've cashed out my 401k to sponsor Holly home when we launched. I sold every possession in my house two months after launching to keep us afloat. Like I sold the roof off the Jeep. I sold my bras. Like, I mean, I, those drugs, you know, being a drug dealer came in handy. You know, I was like, hey, I'll make you a deal. You know, I was on <laughs> Craigslist. Like, um, you know, I have, I, I don't go into to too, too much detail because I don't want to deter people, but you have got to be so committed to what it is that you're doing. And I am because I truly have a belief that if women weren't so busy fearing that we looked our worse, that we could be putting our faculties towards, you know, much more important shit. Mm -hmm. um, and the world would be much more harmonized place because we've got this female energy that is so stifled down that we need to bring up that nurturing, caring, compassionate Energy and that's and in, man, in men harmony. too. Yeah, it's also it's, a, it's an energy that exists in men yes, too. Yes, yes, in a place where it's okay for you guys to cry and to talk about or your just, feelings and not be called a little bitch and get back into your box and you know like there's so much work to mm -hmm. be done. But I I'm like I've sacked my marriage. Like I haven't we haven't fucked in over a year. Mm. Like it's it's get you know and uh, I it's uh, I have absolutely no libido. I'm just I'm tired. Is that from stress out. or what? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's cash flow. It's absolute cash flow. Talk about, talk, could you, can we get into that a little bit? Because I, I think a lot of, I think more people go through that than you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, and I remember it wasn't until I got into my 30s before I felt, and I, I took anabolics when I was younger, fucked up, uh, yeah. totally fucked up my hormone levels, got on HRT when I was 30. And even being on HRT, um, I started to notice I had like no sex drive sometimes. And I was like, what the fuck does it make sense? I'm taking synthetic testosterone. Yeah. And it wasn't until I realized, dive deeper into the stress and how that started. So talk a little bit about that and what that is, what, what a challenge that probably is for your relationship. Yeah, it's always just because it's, especially as, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's no off switch. So it's 11 o'clock at night in bed talking about it, six o'clock in the morning when you wake up your first thought. And, you know, you've got this facade that you're this mat. We are we're a global clothing line and we were told you're going to need a million dollars in the bank when you launched. And we launched with like ten thousand dollars and that grind. It's like, OK, well, it's great. But, you you know, you got to check yourself and I have to check myself and be like, do I think I'm Jesus Christ? That needs to come and die on the cross, because I'm pretty sure from the stories I've heard that dude's already done that. You yeah. know, like, do I really think that I'm this saint savior that's going to like change the world or am I really here doing this without a passion? But like, where do you find the balance? And that's like always what the the key to life in my experience is, is finding balance, you know, and being like, OK, it's all right to, to shut it off. But not, by not being able to shut it off in the amount of stress and it's all it's, again, all cash flow, that stress. It's just you're constantly in your head and you can't think of anything else other than okay, how am I going to get this import duty paid? Oh my God, these hoodies got made fucking inside out. Or, you know, this customer, you know, and this person needs this and that and then so that. And it's just this never ending thing when it's like just at the end of the day, it's like you just want to empower women and put <laughs> media out that shows cellulites and dimples and all body types and, you know, change the game in that way. But, you know, you're, you got to do it first by doing this. And it's just, and so- because you are constantly in your mind thinking about all these things, you know, you can't get excited, mm -hmm. you know, you're just not, you're not present. I, you're not pre at bang back to it. You're absolutely right. And then plus, especially when you work with, um, uh, we work in close proximity and, and stuff. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it doesn't help. And he does his own thing as well, but we're just constantly, it's the stress. And plus the drug use, I've had a big methamphetamines because when you, methamphetamines causes arousal in the beginning. And like, I and most often girls who have had some kind of sexual trauma act out afterwards. I was the biggest skank mm. when I got to college, let me tell you. Oh man, I can't even count. Hundreds. I slept with one of my college professors. It was like a dinosaur studies class, but I wanted an A. I was like, hey, baby, come get some. <laughs> like, I was just, I was off my head. Yeah, I was just acting out so hard. It was it was crazy. So, you know, from that to- You're trying to find it differently now? Is that Yeah, and I, I've, have you, being in the bodybuilding world, heard of Melanotan? 
Melanotan? Yeah. No, 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 tell me. Okay, this is the dangerous thing, too, when you talk about these kinds of things, because then other people are like, ooh, let me get a pin out. Mm. Like, I, you know, uh, Dave Asprey? Yes. Yeah, um, Modafinil? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, right? Yeah, yeah. So then I read that, I'm like, ooh, what's that? And I started taking that. I got a lot of shit done, though, but then I need to <laughs> put that shit down. But Melanotan, um, it's, I remember I saw this bodybuilder, Lisa Cross, um, and her and I did a photo shoot, and she had the most beautiful tan, and she's an English woman. And, you know, most English women. Oh, wait, is this the pills that you take that make you get tan? Yeah, I, I think it comes in a pill form. I'm not positive, but okay. it's an injectable. It's like oh, an, I, did inject rem- it. I do remember this. I read yeah. about this. Yeah, I, I don't know a ton about it. It's kind of what you do as an addict. You're like, yeah, let me jump right in. Mm. Um, and you you inject it. And I'm not sure the, the components of it, but you tan, like you get really dark. Increases melanin, I think, in the skin. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. There was some bodybuilder in Australia who had passed away, this young guy. And like he was taking so much of that along with everything else under the sun, like his organs were even orange. It was wow. crazy. Yeah. But, but the reason why uh, I was taking it is because it increases your libido. Like I wanted to, I, I would have, yeah. I, I was I like rubbed one out in the back of a cab. I was like, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wow. But um then I, it's yeah. And that and then I started getting like white little spots mm. from it and I'm just like, okay, this can't be good for you. Yeah. You know? How long how long were you experimenting with that? Uh about a year. Yeah. Uh yeah. It was around the time of That my was last a big show. thing in the bodybuilding world for a second. I, don't remember. I remember reading was articles this, about heard it. Was not during my time, before or after? This was in, uh, when I read about it, I want to say it was... 2009? Yeah, maybe? probably yeah. right around the right, right around the So like before, 2010. Before, before I was competing. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't remember anybody talking about that. No, yeah. no. It was a thing for a second because you could just inject yourself with you know, it. You know, the, the last thing that I heard that I thought was fucking crazy in the bodybuilding world is what? what's the one that... DNP? Yes, the one that's in Dynamite. That There's ever, a fat burner guys. that just made people yeah. sick. Dimethyl... No, not no, no, that. No, 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 DNP is this chemical that raises your body temperature and oh. and like, like literally cooks burner? you. Oh, it literally cooks you from the inside. So it's, yeah, it's really dangerous. <laughs> it's super toxic. But you know how you know bodybuilders. Yes, yeah, yeah. they'll take anything that yeah. you know. Yes, we will. Anything that it's works. crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy when you ask a lot of them too that it you know if just to get to win, right? They want to win so bad or they want to get that physique so bad that yep. if you were to ask them like, hey, do you know if that could kill you in five or 10 years? Oh yeah, they would still do it anyways. Yeah. That's what trips me out. It trips me out yeah. that well, when even you hate knowing your, it's fucking- When you hate yourself, I mean, let's be honest, a big yeah. chunk of people who are motivated enough to dedicate themselves to hours of exercise a day and a super ridiculously strict diet regime, uh, you know, that and that's many times motivated by this deep insecurity of self hate, and so yeah. you don't really care about looking, uh, or you don't care about your health as much as you care about what you look like. Yeah. And so if it's like, oh, it's going to make me look better, I, fuck it. I want to get back to how how challenging this has to be because I know what I went through with my girl. We're seven years deep into a relationship. We're pretty much married. Yeah. I'm just not a big marriage guy, but yeah. Um. So we got the two dogs and lived together for a long time. So. Yeah. Pretty much we are, right? And, yes. you know, and she's a she's a very sexual person. And for her to go through that, that was really challenging for me, you know, yeah. because, I mean, I could tell that it was starting to, and it, the hard part for me was that it was affecting her, yeah. you know, so that it, it forced a lot of communication and a lot of work between her and I. Is that something you guys are still trying to work through or is, did, have you found like, are you guys communicate a lot about it? Like, no, it, right. We are still trying to work through it. Yeah. We're, we're like, we need to do something different and it's, gate capital and it's to the stage now where it's like okay like we could turn this into a lifestyle business and not grow it but if we're doing this to do what we want to do and really create a revolution because it is spreading Mm -hmm. you know and it's working you need capital like we need to hire people you know like you need you need people helping you because we just and i believe that will solve a majority of the issues problem with that is that you know and that's and i had some had similar thought process because i'm very driven uh when we were first started building this you know i walked away from everything else that i was doing to start and, when, and for me security and money that's why i was i was so stressed my mind was somewhere else i wasn't present something i'll tell you that was a game changer for us yep. and i've shared so my audience has heard this plenty of times so it's not a big deal to them but this may be the first time you've ever tried this and it worked 
wonders for me. Somebody get me a pen. So um, <laughs> getting recorded. Oh, yeah. oh. Katrina and I started doing uh, once a month. We, we we get through one Audible book a month, uh-huh. and the way I figured that out was like an Audible book is anywhere from like eight to twelve hours. So okay, I broke that up, and okay, that means that we're only committing to one to two hours a week that we just agree that we're going to sit down and we're going to listen to this book together. What I got from it, sure, it's great. We, we're growing together. We're reading together. We're learning. Sure, that's all fine. But really what it did was it forced me to be hyper-present. Yeah. And then what I noticed is like when we'd read these, we'd read really cool about challenging topics or things we're learning about. And then it created this dialogue between the two of us. And man, the that's, sex. That's the key is yeah. talking about something other than your work right oh, yeah. which yeah. her and I she's an entrepreneur I'm an entrepreneur yeah. she helps with the business like we that's yeah. all we talk about you know that's so it. it just perpetuated this problem that yeah. I was already having right. and so this was a like a game changer for me was to tap into yeah. that that's been a hack for sure and we've we've said all right we're gonna do we're gonna watch um you know one video a day or and it's just it's difficult to get into the habit and then plus we travel and I'm coming and going and yeah. So, but that's a that's a great that's a great that's a tough it's that's a very tough and why I talk about and share and why I want it, why I'm digging in on you is just because when we went to LA FIFA Expo actually yeah. um, after one of the talks we had a bunch of people there waiting to talk to us and the most common thing I got was men and couples like shaking and crying and talking to me about uh, yeah. the, how much it, it's helped their relationship, the advice oh, that I've given about so ours. Cool. And I didn't realize that I was making that. We were just, we just bullshit and talk, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, we're yeah, very yeah. raw and open. You ask me a question about anything, I'll yeah. openly discuss it or whatever. And so, you know, I've openly discussed challenges that I go through in my life and I share that. I didn't realize how many people really, really uh, struggle with this, yeah. you know, especially when you've been in a relationship for a long time too. 100%. And I, that's the other thing too is I, I find like I'm, will be apart from my partner for a month and a half. You know, and I was just talking about this again with my grandma last night. And I remember um, my other grandparents, they had separate beds in the same room. And I remember I thought that was so weird. And I was like, why do they have separate beds? That's bizarre. But you think about it, like after the first year or two, it's not like you cuddle every night. One of you farts, one of you rolls, sleeps on your <laughs> side, steals the covers, kicks the other one, you know? Or like you get up and you want to, uh, getting up, I, uh, part of my recovery, I, I connect with a power greater than myself. I just think, okay, there's a God and I am not it. I don't know who the fuck I'm praying to or what it, she, he looks like whatever, but, you know, get up and connect and I'm sitting and, and I know how important meditation is. And I've been working on incorporating that for literally the past seven years, a, a habit. Like I do going to the gym every day um, and have not uh, found that piece yet. And I'll get up and he's snoring and I'm like, oh, just block it out. And then I go and I, I'll go somewhere else, but then the dogs need to go out and pee. And then by the time that's off and I'm like, oh, nope, got this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this. And being in another time zone and 80% of our market is here in the US. And you know, it just, but again, it's another excuse. Yeah. It's yeah. another excuse. So- um, It's just, you, it's, you have to like plan it, schedule it, prioritize it like yeah, everything else. Yeah. Well, I think but, there's there's also an area too where you allow yourself to be okay with, like there's different types of meditation. Right. And yeah. this was something that I had to figure out too because I can't go turn the switch off, dark room, and do mm, for yeah, an, yeah, that, yeah. Does, that just doesn't work for me. No. But what I can do is I can go off in my neighborhood and, you know, put maybe like my brain FM in my ears or listen listen to something that's really peaceful to me and just walk. Yeah. That's and, right. And it's, that's a form of meditation yeah. and, and just and being just hyper present with the moment now, yeah. you know. And I think and I'll take my I'll walk barefoot and I'll just pay attention to the way my feet are gripping yeah. the grass and the ground and grounding. Yeah. I mean that's that I mean you don't great. necessarily have to do it in the room. I think a lot of people mistake that I I did. I I always thought like, oh yeah. no, I'll never I, be in a meditation. I learned a meditation called uh, slow walk, and what you do is you walk from one end of the room to another, and you do it so slowly that you have to pay attention to every like inch of movement of your foot as you're walking, and so you do it as slow as you possibly can from one end to the other, and because you're so aware of your movement positioning, yeah, it's totally a form <sighs> of present mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah. That's Works pretty well. Neighbors trip out. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with that guy? So, Whoa. so what's in the future for, for you guys right now? You have that big event that you got scheduled. Yes. And when is that? It's the end of April. So it's April 28th and 29th. And it's at the golden nugget. It's not at the artisan this year. <laughs> so it's under, it's all underneath one roof and it's going to be wild. So we got a pool party Friday night so everybody can come. Cause because of this closed group, like we have had, 
for example, we're having a girl girl wedding. We had two customers who met in this group, That's great. and then some other customers fund raised funds to fly one from New Zealand to Chicago. They met, fell in love, oh, cool. and now we're oh, going to marry them good. Sunday night. Oh no way! Yeah, good for them. it's amazing. So we've got That's like awesome. uh, keynote speakers, anything from um, freedom from food addiction. Uh, effective communication, um, you know, body confidence. Wow, this and, is great. And then workshops. So Rose Namahumis is going to do MMA. Uh, Meg Squats is going to do the deadlift. Um, Amina is going to do strongman. Then we've got self defense, nurtured heart approach. Do you, any, you have kids? Uh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we both do. Actually. I mean, just... um, nurtured heart approach is. Uh, are any of them on the spectrum, like ADHD or autistic? No, or anything? I'm probably ADHD. ADHD. Yeah. <laughs> same, yeah. same, same. What'd you say? No, I'm <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> um, but and it can be applied to any relationship. But mm. you know, uh, twerking, uh, lap dancing, you know, all this, all these different things and these women gets to choose and then we're going to have like a powerlifting and a strong girl comp so uh, an opportunity for women to compete who have never touched a barbell before but not be in a judgmental environment and it's cool that's great now do people they so obviously they pay to attend to this event yeah it's 279 dollars for the whole weekend um does that include the room it doesn't include the room okay say damn 30 percent off yeah it's it's a the bargain's ridiculous. It's a swag bag and, and includes everything. Um, How many people do you have coming? We're yeah. aiming for 400 plus. Awesome. So we've, I've got about 100 women that are in desperate need of going who can't afford that I've granted a ticket to. So as a company this year, if we can break even, I'll be really excited. But we did just launch literally last night an Indiegogo campaign. And instead, and I'm, you know, I'm like, look, I do not want to go down the route of venture capitalism, mm -hmm. as I mentioned. And this is an opportunity. It's almost like a basically pre-sale, you know, so we've got all these dope things that you can buy on this campaign. You're just not going to get them for a little while, but at least that will give us the flexibility mm -hmm. to have cash flow because then it's beyond the clothing. The clothing is just the flag we fly. Mm -hmm. This is just the jumping off point. C clothing is boring as shit. It's so boring. Oh my God. And some of our stuff is great and some of it sucks. You know, <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is horrible. Um, and do you guys know we don't use sizes? No, what? We use athletes' names. So, when oh, that's a, a cool, what a cool women's thing. Women's sizing was developed. Does anybody brilliant. else do this? No. That's, that's so brilliant. That is that fucking, I already know what you do. That's that brilliant. That's so great. smart. Yeah. Yeah. And here's why because of the stigma, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. And, you know, it's ridiculous. The last stat I read is 95% um, of women's workout gear is made for a size large and below, and yet 50% of women getting active are a size large and above. We were the only brand at that expo at the Arnold that had any kind of body representation. You know, you walk mm -hmm. around and you see all these fit, tiny sure. women in their little booty shorts and sports bras handing out shit. And we're, I mean, I had women, you know, our size Sam, Sam Coleman, Guinness Book of World Record squat holder. Like she's a massive power lifter. She cops so much shit on social media too. And she just fucking laughs. It's so cool. But she is our quote unquote biggest athlete. And then we go all the way down to Ava, which is uh, for eight to 10 year olds. And so instead of being like, oh, I'm a, I'm a extra small, you know, it's like, yeah, you're a um, uh, Cassie, who's this awesome judo badass, or, you know, I'm a, so I'm a size Heidi. Heidi is Canada's arm wrestling champion. Does she will fuck any one of you up? Probably. <laughs> it's so cool. And so women just having that uh, freedom from the size stigma, just go next level. So here they are seeing a brand that is celebrating. Do you have like a, a picture of all of them so people can kind of see, like if you don't know We've who. We've got the measurements because look, I, I'm a quote unquote size Courtney. And yeah. when we did the measurements, it was, you know, the, uh, 2015, I was doing my last show. I was a bit smaller. And so people, you know, can get a little confused if they're like, oh, but that doesn't. So we just go by the measurements, but we're running an athlete search right now for, mm -hmm. for two women who have essentially retired out of their sport or what have you. Um, so it's more or less the, the measurements and then the women can, you know, be their true measurement. Cause if you shop online and I hate shopping online, so really fucking cool of me to start an online brand, <laughs> but, um, you know, they get to, they have to take a measure tape out and measure themselves and get their true size as opposed to, cause if you shop at Nike versus Under Armour versus Reebok, you're going to get something completely mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Right. And so it, it it's really revolutionized. Really yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so our rate of return is like less than 1%. Oh wow. Yeah. 
That's uh, granted, cool. Because cool. if people it fits. Yeah, yeah. And granted, we get, you know, we still have issues just like any other company would in that area. But um, generally speaking, most online retailers are anywhere from 25 to 30%. So mm -hmm. that was a, a real big game changer for us. Um, and then, of course, the no Photoshop and everything. But then we all of our clothing has this hang tag where women take a pledge and they solemnly swear to the best of their ability to refrain from talking negatively about themselves as well as other females. I, um, under, I am an equal amongst my peers and understand and embrace that I'm neither better than nor less than through this pledge of non-judgment. Uh, wait, I understand and embrace that I am either equal or less than. I've said it so many goddamn times. <laughs> um, I embrace my body and I'm furthering the global revolution of body acceptance. And when they say that out loud, you know, like you had people coming up to you crying and saying, thank you, you transformed my life. You know, and you're like, yeah, that fills your cup up. That fills your soul. You're helping people. You're being of service. And that's what we're missing. And now other women get to take that and they can write a compliment on it and give it to another woman. And now we're starting this thing of sisterhood. And that's what the revolution is, is women empowering other women. And I'll tell you what, I got so butthurt because Dana Lynn Bailey, uh, you know, Dana Lynn Bailey. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So I, I met her at the the Fit Expo in Melbourne. You know, this was like years ago when I was doing Camp Confidence. And I, I caught her off to the side. I was like, hey, let me tell you, what's up, girl? You know, great job, da, da, da. Because people would always tell me, oh, you look like Dana Lynn Bailey. I'm like, I think I'm older. I think she looks like me. <laughs> um, and because uh, I, you know, kind of stopped competing around the time that she was coming up. And uh, I told her about Camp Confidence. And I said, had her do the, because we used to do the pledge at Camp Confidence, mm. except for they got, you know, Camp Confidence pledge. And then so when another teenager would see another teenager on the street, they knew that they weren't each other's competition and that they were sisters, right? Um, so I explained that to her and all this stuff. And we did the pledge and I put a little band on. And I'm like, can you give us a shout out on social media? And she was like, yeah. And now that I've done an expo now, just doing the Arnold, I know how tiring it is. They, they didn't give us a social, they didn't say anything. But then a month later, she had ran a confidence camp. It wasn't, it was with a C, but I was like, oh no, you didn't. Oh, yeah. I'm coming for you. I'm fine. I'm going to compete. And that was my inspiration to go out and get back into competing. And, oh, wow, she, and then she retired. She announced that she wasn't going to do the Olympia that year. And I was just like, oh, hell. But I'm sure she was already, had, you know what I mean? But my ego, because yeah. that's how we're programmed, just be yeah. like, that was my idea. Yeah. I was like, no, motherfucker. What's that? Ecclesiastes. I don't know the verse in the Bible, but there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. You know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just putting our own perspective on it. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, God bless her. Like you're doing your thing. You're empowering women as opposed to saying like, oh, that was my idea. I did that first. Or, you know, now that I've talked about sizing and all your, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers, somebody, somebody might go out and do this now. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's enough out there for everybody to fucking profit. Just right. chill totally. out. Totally right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's about women collectively working together and opening up and sharing in a community because that's what we're missing is being a part of a community. And you mentioned it earlier, Sal, something about, you know, we are on social media, but we're more isolated now than we are ever. We have all these thousands of friends and followers, and but it's not real. You can go back and edit what you say. You can edit your pictures. You don't interpret things. There's no energy connection you know, you can't look into someone's eyes. And that's what the events are for, right? Yeah, 100%. I, I have okay. I have, I have, have hope, though, in humanity because I feel like that's why voices like yours, like yeah. ours, resonate so much with people is because I feel like the pendulum's starting to swing really yeah. far that way. Yeah. And it's time to fucking come back where yeah. you appreciate people that are raw, that are real. Yeah. They may not say the appropriate things all the time. They may offend somebody, this yeah. or that, but I'd rather yeah. have that person yeah. than somebody who's you know fake and stand. editing and yeah. Photoshopping their whole life. I'll right? tell you what, though. It's, there's sometimes I have to, it pisses, it doesn't piss me off, but I was, like I told you, I went down the rabbit hole quite deep. I was always, you know, Eddie Bravo and. Oh, God. Said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, which, yeah. we, flat earth? What are we talking about here? No, I, hey, <laughs> I'm so open minded. Like, even David, David Icke, I remember when I first, this, I know it's probably time to wrap it up. So, but I, uh, this conspiracy of people being, you know, like the lizards and shape shifting yeah, 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 yeah. and all this kind of stuff six years ago. And I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> six years down the track, I went and sat in a room for eight hours and listened to him lecture. And I'm like, Holy shit. But there, you know, you don't talk about that stuff because oh, people just think you're crazy. 
you know, like, whoa, you're nuts. But we're all now starting to talk about like fluoride. Okay. Why can't we drink out of the Dude, tap? Or, sometimes I'm telling you, know? you, sometimes reality is fucking crazier than any conspiracy. Exactly. And like, where's the easiest place to hide something right in front of you? That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, sh- well, shit, man, you've, uh, this has been a very entertaining interview. I'm really glad <laughs> yeah. you guys had me uh, on. And yeah. if anybody wants to get involved, like our, our campaign has, it's called the self love rebellion tour. So we're looking to do a tour. There's heaps of perks on there. We've got digital products that will teach self love. And a lot of the stuff was from the teenage program that I started. So they're actual tangible tools mm. to start working on yourself. Cause you got to put pen to paper. You can't, you're not going to find self love flipping through a people magazine or watching dancing with the stars. You know, you got to sit down and look at what are your values? Like you said, what do you, what do you stand for? Mm. Um, you know, and, and where are you going? How are you getting there? Who's going with you? You know, be ready, like know yourself. Um, and then of course badass clothing. And then we've got our live event and we've got a documentary that is coming out roses in it. She's got a oh, pretty cool. incredible oh, story. Cool. We've got a woman that um, we're just looking at challenging women who are doing different stuff that um, are changing the game. How did you and Rose get connected? Uh, I can't, one of our customers had brought her up and it was the same thing. Did with, you guys get connected before she became the champ and everything too? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. did? Oh, so, that's even cooler. I, and that's why I know this is kind of like a universal thing. Are you shaking your head? You got to oh, I'm over here. and I'm a hot mess. Sorry. Oh, babe, take your beanie <laughs> off. Take your beanie off. Huh? Oh, it's keeping me warm. <laughs> oh, you want some of my antibiotics? No. Maybe. I'm codependent as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah, that's why I think it's a universal thing. Like what are the odds, you know, yeah. of Holly Holm beating uh, Ronda Rousey? Come on. That was epic. Yeah, every Australian was like, why didn't you bet? Why didn't you take it to a pokey mate? And I'm like... Okay, cut. I don't, whatever. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I truly think that this is a, a higher mission and I'm just here doing God's work. Mm. And I know that's a loaded word, but I mean, I just, every day I wake up, I'm like, can you guide me and direct me? Please just show me what to do and how to do it. And I will do it because it's not the Courtney show, even though I want it to be the Courtney show. Like, I think I should have been on Oprah already or Ellen and I'm pissed off about it. (laughs) But ideally, it's not that. It's just I just need to show up and ask. And if you ask, the universe will guide you. Might not always guide you properly to shave your armpits correctly. (laughs) But, you know, if you just do the next right thing, have good intentions, be a good fucking person and have faith and belief, you know. And we'll see what happens. Excellent. Fuck yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.